today from Rogers Center in Toronto. The Red Sox have dropped two in a row. Look to snap that streak against the Blue Jays in game two. Rick Porcello gets the start in Canada. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Toronto. I'm Dave O'Brien. Delighted to be joined by Jerry Remy and Steve Lyons with us today as well. And, Jerry, last night the Red Sox lost game one, seven to five, but Xander Bogart's got a hit that's 20 in a row, and here we go again. Yeah, I mean, what he's doing is very special, and he's actually improved over last year if that's possible. And one of the reasons is the fact that he's also pulling the ball more this year. Last year, a lot of his hits were to the opposite field, but as you see in this video, he's taking pitches that are down and in right there, a breaking ball, and taking it out of the ballpark at Fenway Park. And then, of course, last night he picks up a base hit that goes right up the middle to continue that hitting streak at 20 games and what a streak it's been when you think of Bradley streak and Bogots I mean the numbers are off the charts 391 batting average six doubles four home runs 13 RBIs look at the OPS over a thousand that's off the charts and you know Bogots just continues to get better and better I didn't think it was possible offensively he could get better this year but he has 196 hits last year yeah. may top that this season and Steve the lineup has been on the quiet side the last Last couple of days it usually has not stayed that way very long yeah not very long and it's not just bogey that's swinging the bat we know that it's the entire lineup up and down they swing the bats very very well and the numbers reflect that and sometimes it's fun to look at the way they rank among big leaguers other times it's like it's nice to look at the run differential and that's simply how many more runs are they scoring than the other team 70 plus 70 this year last year they finished a minus 36 and when you look at in the American League Three of the top four batting averages belong to this Red Sox lineup when you're talking about Bogey, Bradley, and Ortiz. And oh, by the way, that makes up most of the middle of your order as well. Well, so that's the offense. We've been talking about that all season long. The pitching the last couple of days has not been great, but Rick Porcello gets the start today. He is 7-2 and two on the season, trying to knock off the Toronto Blue Jays here in the second game of the three-game series. And the first pitch is coming up in just a moment. you buy buy a toyota.com toyota's website for deals by dunkin donuts america runs on dunkin by subaru retailers in new england supplying award-winning all-wheel drive vehicles throughout new england by sullivan tire and auto service by the 2017 kia sportage visit any dealers.com to learn more by sleepies shop sleepies three day doorbuster weekend for deals today tomorrow and monday sleepies the only mattress professionals and by southwest airlines transparency low fares and nothing to hide beautiful day here in Toronto and for the second consecutive day the roof is open here at Rogers Center David Ortiz is back in the lineup here this afternoon for the Red Sox and this greater coverage of baseball brought to you by T-Mobile David Ortiz in his career against Toronto 65 doubles 59 homers and has the most by any opponent in Blue Jay history for all of these categories 
So look at the Red Sox lineup. It's brought to you by buyatoyota.com. Toyota's website for deals. It'll be Mookie Betts to lead things off here today. He's in right field. Dustin Bedroy at second. Xander Bogarts at short. Big Poppy the DH with Hanley Ramirez at first base. Jackie Bradley is in center field. Travis Shaw at third. Chris Young at left. And Christian Vasquez gets the catch. And up against the right-hander Marcus Stroman, who is 5-1, a 389 earned run average. As the Toronto Blue Jays take the field, Red Sox have lost two in a row for the first time since the 18th of May. And now lead the American League East by one game over Baltimore as the Orioles won their game last night. Red Sox rallied against Stroman here in April. He had a five-run lead, but he lasted only five and a third. Giving up five earned runs. That's a game the Red Sox would win eight to seven. The starting pitcher brought to you by McDonald's. I'm loving it. He is 4 0 lifetime against the Red Sox. The Blue Jays defense is brought to you by DraftKings. They are seventh in the league, 28 errors in 50 games. Josh Donaldson will be at third base. Darwin Barney, the shortstop. Devon Travis at second. And Justin Smoke, the first baseman. Left to right, Mikey Saunders, Kevin Pilar, and Jose Batista back in the lineup after serving a one game suspension. And Russell Martin doing the catching for Strowman. The umpires are brought to you by ToyotaCertified.com. Mike DeMuro behind the plate. Nick Lentz at first. Brian Gorman is the crew chief. He's at second. Quinn Walcott, the young umpire, at third base. We're available. This telecast can be heard in Spanish by selecting the SAP button on your TV remote. SAP presented by ToyotaCertified.com. Search for your factory back Toyota certified used vehicle right now. When it's Tardes, amigos. And finally, the weather, 73 degrees. And wind direction doesn't really factor that much here, but in from the left at six miles an hour. And the chairman, Tom Warner, is in the crowd here with his grandkids today. Taking in some sunshine. It's nice to be outdoors when you're here because you never know with this dome. And they said just last week it was freezing up here. There was no opening up the roof if they were playing up here. In fact, I believe last night was the first night they opened up the roof here. Yeah, Beyonce was here recently and she wanted it closed and she gets what she wants. <laughs> she doesn't want to be chilly. Mookie Betts to lead it off at 270, but he's in an 0 for 15 right now. He had a quiet night last night going 0 for 4. And the first one from Stroman up and away ball one. From the diminutive right-hander, he's all a 5'8". He can get it up there around 94, 95. 2-0 oh on Mookie. They missed it last night. The Red Sox rallied from a deficit. They tied the game, and they would lose 7-5, as that one is chopped foul. Thanks to a huge night from Josh Donaldson, who hit two home runs. And, Jerry, that second one... I'm still wondering how it got out of the ballpark. I was surprised. You know, it looked like to me when he hit it, he didn't get it enough, and it, I thought it was going to go in foul territory. That was off Koji, laced into right, but Batista, who's back in the lineup, will make the catch. He sat out because of his suspension because of that brawl in Texas last night. Yeah, the strange thing about Batista, too, is of course he's back in the lineup today, one game off for the suspension for the brawl, as Dave mentioned, and he's in the leadoff spot. He's been there for about the last seven games for the. Blue Jays and they've been playing very good baseball with him in the leadoff spot. They just put Tulowitzki on the disabled list because of a quad injury, which he has been battling as Pedroia takes outside ball one. John Gibbons said, I don't really have a prototypical leadoff guy. I'm going to give my best three hitters the most at bats I can give them. That's right. Pedroia got a bit lucky in the eighth inning last night. When leading off and the Sox down five to four hit a fly ball to left center it fell between Saunders and Pilar for a double should have been caught. He would later score to tie at five five. So with good fortune he ran his hitting streak against Toronto to twenty one in a row. You have to have some good fortune to run a streak to twenty one games and there's a shot down the line. That's going to get past Bautista up against the wall. Pedroia taking off for second base. And he is in there with a double. 
So make it 22 in a row and now starting to close in on Jerry Remy's all time hit streak record against <laughs> Toronto 26. Yeah, keep on going Dustin. He <laughs> takes this one to the opposite field right here. Five game hitting streak now for Pedroia. Fastball away doesn't try to pull it just go with it run it all the way to the wall and get in the scoring position at second base. He's now five for 11 in his career against Stroman. Vlad Guerrero is one behind the rim dog. And here's Bogarts at 345 and taking ball one. And of course his overall streak 20 in a row. Got there with a fourth inning base hit last night. He was one for four. And Sox trying to jump on Stroman. He's really their ace. And that's in for a strike. You know, Jerry, I have no problem with the route that Batista took after this baseball. He tried to cut it off. And if he does that, he holds Pedroia to single. But if he doesn't, it's going to be a double either way. If he took the correct route to try to cut that ball off, Petey still would have gone to second base. He was gambling that he might be able to cut it off for a single. That one served to the shortstop as Barney throws to first to get him and Pedroia down to third base. But there are two out now with David Ortiz coming up. It's one of those ground balls there that turned out well for Pedroia because he got <laughs> trapped, I think, a little bit. That ball was directly at him. I'm not sure he knew whether to go to third or not. He decides to go, and fortunately, Barney threw the ball to first base. Now, rule of thumb, usually if it's to your left, you can go, but you see Pedroia had to hold up to make sure the ball got by him. And then he took off. I think if Barney goes to third base, they probably get Pedroia. They looked out a little bit on that one. Ortiz hitting 337 with 12 homers, 45 runs batted in. He did not play last night. Now Jerry has such a great point too, and it's why that rule works. If the ball's to your left as the runner, you can go. If it's to your right, you're probably going to get thrown out if you try to go to third, and that ball was to Pedroia's right. Yeah, I think one of the key things, Steve, is to make sure you know where that shortstop is playing. Before the ball's pitched. It's softly, and they're going to get out of the inning without allowing a run on the first base, and Ortiz is retired, so despite the double, the Red Sox come up empty. Toronto coming up in the first, no score. England Chevy dealers. It'll be Bautista, Donaldson, Encarnacion. That's a tough one, two, three. Saunders, Smoke, and Martin will follow. Travis and Barney and Pilar will round out the starters here against Rick Porcello, who is 7 and 2, a 347 ERA. Red Sox starting pitcher presented by New England Audi dealers. He is 2 and 0 oh against Toronto this season. 
Both of those wins back in April. Batista, the leadoff hitter with 10 home runs, and he takes a ball. Big numbers, too, against Porcello. 433 in his career with three home runs against Rick. It's a lot like Donaldson's numbers against Joe Kelly last night. That's a home run cut and a miss. Yeah, very late on that fastball by Porcello. But Porcello at 92 miles an hour elevates it a little bit. Batista's hit 38 career home runs against Boston, the most by any active player. Bogarts in front and guns to get him. The Red Sox defense is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. They are fourth in the American League, 23 errors, 48 games. Travis Shaw at third base, Xander Bogarts the shortstop, Dustin Pedroia at second, Andy Ramirez the first baseman, left to right, Chris Young, Jackie Bradley Jr. and Mookie Betts and Christian Vasquez doing the catching for Porcello. Donaldson had a huge night last night. Four for five, two homers, five RBIs. And Kelly delighted he does not have to face him for a while. Hit the game-winning two-run homer in the eighth inning. Gave Toronto the lead three times. <laughs> By himself, drove in five. When you look at his night from last night, you can see why he hit some of those balls. They were excellent pitches to hit. But then the last home run he hit off of Koji, you're like, goodness. I mean, that's a ball right there, kind of middle in, leaks back out over the middle of the plate. He should hammer that pitch. But that pitch right there shows you how good he is. To go up and get that and hit it out of the ballpark is unbelievable. Koji couldn't believe it either. The 0 2. Try to hold up. They do appeal and not a swing. Last year he hit 41 homers drove in 123 runs you could not sneak a fastball past this guy. And you can't this year either 13 homers the one two. One down and the two two. To the reigning MVP. Kind of a blooper and caught by Pedroia. Fans, be sure to stop by Plain Ridge Park Casino. Plain Ridge Park Casino is the official sponsor of winning. So, two men out. Porcello, lifetime against Toronto, is six and seven. He has an ERA here at Rogers Center of 715. Mm hmm. But he did win here eight to four back on April 9th. And Carnacion looks at a ball. Yeah, you look through that lineup, and there's a lot of pretty gaudy numbers against Porcello by these uh, Toronto hitters. But he does have that 2 0 record so far this season, but a high ERA of five. Hey, you talk about gaudy numbers. Here's another one. And Carnacion, 12 for 32, three home runs, 375. Rest of the American League is pitching Encarnacion away. Pretty much the way I figured you should have been pitching him his whole career. Rocketed toward the alley. That's a gapper. That's going to get past Jackie Bradley. He'll get to it on the running track in the second base. Encarnacion, not a bad throw, but kind of trickled in at the end. It'll be a two bagger for the number three hitter. You know, you talk about getting the, the top three hitters up as much as possible. Batista, Donaldson, Encarnacion, and very tough to run those guys one, two, three. That ball stays out over the plate. It's supposed to be away. You can see where Vasquez is set up. A mislocation. And it seems like recently, every time the Red Sox pitchers miss a spot, they're getting hurt by it, either by a base hit or, in most cases, it's been a home run. Exactly what we talked about there, Jerry. Everyone's going away from him. They're getting him out, hitting under 240 this year. But if you get anything leaking back out over the middle of the plate or inner half to him, he will hammer it. Here's Saunders, who's on base three times last night. He walked three times and struck out twice. They bat him in a cleanup spot, hitting 302. 
No score in the first. Now, Jerry, I know that he uses a lot. There's a few guys on this team that use that running, sinking fastball effectively as a backdoor pitch. It just seems like it's a riskier pitch. In tight. My inclination would be, why don't I four seam that fastball to the outer half so that it stays true? And if I miss, I miss away. Instead of if I don't throw the pitch I want, it leaks back out and ends up being the ball that Encarnacion hits. 1 1 on the way. That jammed him right in on the knuckles. Yeah, it's talking about Sanders today in the cleanup spot. It was kind of a strange pace to see him because he's 0 for 10 in his career against Porcello. Porcello quickly ahead, one ball and two strikes. One, two, swung on and foul, tipped into the mitt, and down he goes for strike three. So Porcello pitches out of that and leaves a man at second base and was scoreless after one. Back for the second inning. No score on a very nice day here in Toronto. Hanley Ramirez, Jackie Bradley, Travis Shaw up against Marcus Stroman. Hanley hitting 338 on the road, 298 overall. And looks at a strike. I mean, Stroman's got five pitches that he can throw for strikes. He tries to be a ground ball wizard and gets a lot of them. It seems amazing that he'd mess around with all the other stuff that he throws up there. Got a great slider. He pounds that in for a strike. Yeah, so far it's been basically fastball sinking fastballs to the Red Sox in the early going. He has not uh, mixed in some of his other five pitches yet. He's gone 29 and a third since he last allowed a home run. That breaking ball missed, according to home plate up Demuro, just off the corner. Yeah, he left that ball inside. It was the breaking ball, the slide of that time, and it did uh, not the location he wanted it in. And fortunately, it was too far in for Hanley to swing at. The one two and a high fly into left field, driving back Saunders. Right there at the edge of the warning track to make the catch. One away. Thousands of kids in the Boston community are unable to play baseball or softball because they can't afford equipment. You can help by donating new or used equipment right now. Join the Red Sox and Baseball Tomorrow Fund by bringing your equipment to Fenway Park June 17, 18, and 19. 
And Jackie Bradley to climb in, hitting 341 with eight homers, 35 RBIs, and taking ball one. Jackie 0 for 8 against Stroman in his career. Bradley last night 1 for 3. He scored a run. It was right after the 29 game hitting streak came to an end. Three and nothing. Before the hitting streak got underway, Jackie was batting 222. And when he ended it, he was the American League's number two hitter at 341. <laughs> he got it done in there for a strike, and it'll fill up the count. Jackie to me is like playing the stock market, you know, so far in his career. I mean, you put money in and backing up smoke. Stroman gets to the bag for the out. Two up and two down. You know, all of a sudden you put money in and sometimes it goes way down and you lose your money, then you put some more in and he goes way up and you make a lot of money. Where's it gonna level off? That's my question, you know, with uh, with Jackie Bradley. I mean he's had incredible streaks, cold streaks and hot streaks. And I'm having a difficult time finding out where the middle ground is going to be. Let me know when he's going to be down and put the money in then. When that goes back <laughs> up again, then we'll watch it level off. <laughs> I have no idea when you talk about the stock market, what you're even talking about. <laughs> no, I don't either because I've lost a ton. So. <laughs> Sorry to hear that. Travis Shaw hitting 303 with six home runs. And after Chili homestand, he was four for 23 on the homestand. He went two for four with an RBI last night. He's 20 for his last 50 against these Blue Jays. It does like facing them. As a 400 against them in the last 14 games. Yeah, they don't have the big shift on him like a lot of teams do, but they do have Donaldson way off that line at third base. As you can see on the uh, home plate camera. And they shade him slightly to the opposite field in the outfield. Got a piece of that one to square the count of two and two. You see that a lot with guys where the scouting report will say, well, if he pulls the ball, a lot of times he'll hit it on the ground. If he drives, it'll go the other way. Two two to Shaw. That missed. And you saw the catcher Martin hold it there for an extra second or two. Yeah, Stroman couldn't believe it, but the ball was outside. See where Martin set up and he pulls it back just a little bit to the corner. 3 2 cut on him in strike three. So that's all for the Red Sox. They go very quickly. And Stroman breezes in the second.
These cold hard facts brought to you by clean crisp Coors Light. Rick Porcello last four starts against the AL East. It's gone very well. Three and one a 2.96 ERA. And stays away from ball four. Is Justin Smoke to lead things off in the second inning. We are scoreless as he trickles a foul. Mixed bag for him last night Steve he struck out three times but he also hit a long home run. It's kind of the guy he's been this season for this ball club. They've always been interested in his power. <laughs> when he gets a hold of one it goes a long way. Four home runs so far. But you know when you leave the ballpark and you go back home. Yeah you hit one a long long way and that's great you drove in a run you hit a home run. But are you fixated on the three strikeouts or are you celebrating that home run. I think most guys celebrate a home run if you can hit one but guys don't care about strikeouts like they used to. Hey, you'll punch out 150 200 times as long as you're productive in the at bats that you do make contact with people don't care about strikeouts anymore. Not like Jerry and I we were embarrassed to strike out. Well I guess that's my point because that's what has changed with the generation of ball players to the present day. They don't care much about strikeouts at all. Uh, Smoke's a different kind of a player. You know, he's a guy that does strike out an awful lot. So, you know, when he hits the home run, that obviously makes him feel good. He's last night, for example, he's talking about a one for four day with a home run. And Pedroia on to first base to get him, one man out. I mean, I think every player has their different strengths and weaknesses, obviously. And I think, you know, the strength of Smoke is his strength, and that's to hit home runs. And if he piles up a bunch of punch outs on the way, well, that's so be it. He could care less. He, I don't think he cares. I mean, he'd like not to. But I mean that's his game. A lot of guys like that in the game today. There are a lot more guys like that in the game today than ever before. I think. I, I would agree. And it is about the home run. Yeah if you're going to hit 35 or 40. And strike out 170 times. Tremendous value there. Here's Russell Martin. 179 two homers 11 runs batted in. He's had a tough year so far. Last year he hit 23 he drove in 77 in there for a strike. Well, Russell Martin so far this season I think he's a victim of watching his teammates swing the bat and maybe not so much this year but last year with the power numbers those guys were able to throw up right now he's been lunging kind of pulling off the ball spinning off the ball trying to go deep back to Porcello and an easy play for the second out. Tomorrow at 5.30, don't miss the ultimate Red Sox show presented by AAA. We recap the ceremony at Fenway honoring the 86 Red Sox. We hear from Wade Boggs on the night as number 26 was retired. That's tomorrow at 5.30 only on Nesson. You know, to Steve's point, what he was talking about, that last at bat for Martin was a very good example because he got a breaking ball and that front shoulder just left way too soon like he was trying to drive the ball out of the ballpark and instead he gets the little tap back to the pitcher for the out. Here's Travis, who's at second base, hitting 250, no homers. But the Blue Jays are starting to play some very good baseball. Suddenly. They have won three in a row. Now just five games behind the Sox. They are in third place in the AL East. Kind of similar to what they did last year, a slow start. But they got it going. When you look at it, it's all been about their pitching so far this season because the offensive numbers are dismal compared to what they did last year, and yet they're still a 500 team. Travis asking for time, and he gets it from Mike DeMuro. You know, they're still getting their home runs. I mean, they're up you yeah. know, near the top of the league in that department, but they're having a lot of trouble with men in scoring position as far as scoring runs. That has improved recently. One, two, and he just gets a piece of that to hang in there. That's a pretty good curveball from Porcello going down and away right there to uh, Travis. And Travis, fortunately, able to follow that ball and give himself another chance because uh, that uh, that type of pitch right there will cause a swing and miss. I think that's a great pitch for Porcello whether he fouled it off or not. Oh that one got Whoa. the umpire and staggers Mike DeMuro as he goes down and the trainer for Toronto racing out to attend to him. 
They saw Vasquez reach back to keep him from collapsing entirely. That looked like a pitch that probably shouldn't even have been swung at. It was way up and in. And I think that left Demiro kind of exposed on the inner half of the plate. See where he sets up. Bang. It's flush. Yeah, that's not a glancing blow. Well, that gives you an idea of the impact uh, that those foul balls have on the catchers, on the umpires, and I just knocked him back right on his knees. In recent years, there have been so many concussion injuries to umpires and neck and back injuries. Yeah. And some umpires have been forced into retirement because of nasty neck and back injuries. Well, he could break out the old Jake LaMotta line and basically say, hey, I never went down, Ray. Went to one knee, never went down. No. I think the thing they're concerned about now is concussion, and I'm sure that's what they're giving him uh, some questions about. I think if there's any doubt, he should be removed from the ball game immediately. And, you know, I think uh, maybe his, uh, his partners on the bases will uh, maybe encourage that. We'll see. But uh, he's getting a long look by the trainer for the Toronto Blue Jays. Now, those masks are designed to disperse the pressure of a ball when it hits you in the face, but I mean, you can only take so much, and this is a bullet right off his face mask. Boy, he still looks woozy to me. Yeah, I think the wise thing to do would be, you know, let's go with three umpires, somebody else get that gear on, get behind the plate, and Play the rest of the game with three. Make sure that he's okay. Why chance it? Now Brian Gorman is the crew chief. I'm sure he'll have a say in this. Yeah, this is this is taking too long to leave him in there, Jerry. Don't you think? Yeah. I mean, I, think, I know he's trying to talk his way in, but I think right now they're going to go put on the uh, the umpire's room is uh, right down that. Alley where the Red Sox dugout is, and uh, Nick to the Red Sox clubhouse. And I think what's going to happen is he's going to go put that equipment on to probably get the Muro out. And it looks the way it's going is Gorman left, and they're going to take the Red Sox off the field here. The infielders and Rick Porcello are starting to head over toward the dugout. So it's not really an easy process to make that change. Too, this will take a few minutes. I mean, he's basically got to undress and put all the Basically, they wear a lot of the catcher's gear inside underneath the shirt. It's a completely different uniform if you're behind the plate than if you're on the bases. Travis Shaw and the rest of the Sox coming off, and the outfielders move to shade. We're going to take a break here in just a moment, but Mike DeMuro is done for the day after getting a wicked foul ball right into the face mask. Seems to be the very prudent thing to do here to get him out. And Brian Gorman would be taken over behind the plate. The crew chief will be the home plate umpire. We'll take a break here. No score in the second inning, and we'll be back with more in just a moment.
brought to you by Southwest Airlines transparency low fares and nothing to hide by buyatoyota.com Toyota's website for deals by your New England Audi dealers and by Digital Federal Credit Union see what DCU can save you a delay in the game as we are scoreless Rick Porcello just has to stand there right now no sense even warming up at the moment because it's going to take a while this usually does when an umpire has to leave because of an injury and that is the case here for the home plate umpire Mike DeMuro so as you mentioned Steve you know Gorman has to leave the diamond go into the umpire's room get completely undressed and then redressed as the home plate umpire with the equipment on and everything and this takes a while yeah and obviously uh, you see the catcher sitting behind home plate he's got all his gear on they virtually wear the same gear but inside uh, their outfit there and he's got to get all that on because they don't wear any of that on the bases it doesn't make any sense but you know you got to be protected back there and and we can see how serious that position can be and I'm glad they did this I'm glad I think they made the right move there's no question that you know he was shaken up by that and why take the chance and letting him stay the rest of the game take another shot off the face and you know get him out of there and uh, make sure his tests come back OK and you know go with the three man umpire they've done that in the past it's not a problem once they get to when it gets to the routine of it and as fans we like to complain about that wasn't a strike or this was a ball but those guys have to be sharp back there in order to do it and if you take a shot like this right off the face mask. And if you're just stunned a little bit how are you going to call the balls and strikes the way you're supposed to you just don't have your facilities about you. Vasquez did everything that he could to keep him up tomorrow at 1130 on an all new Nesson Clubhouse a special throwback edition we look at the evolution of the baseball jersey at the Hall of Fame Rick Porcello tells you what board games he loved to play as a kid. And it's all tomorrow morning at 1130 on Nesson Clubhouse that's presented by Delta Dental of Massachusetts. It's kind of a tough little pill for both ball clubs too. the inactivity of playing obviously Porcello would just soon be out there pitching and maybe you'd say well hey it's just like when your team comes in to hit and they have a nice long inning for you you have to sit and endure that and wait so it might might be even rougher on Stroman because he's already been sitting down they got to go back out there get a few more outs before he can go out and pitch again this is going to be a really long inning for him. So we will wait on the crew chief Gorman to return as the home plate umpire will go with three umpires the rest of the day here in Toronto. And they'll get another one up here for the finale tomorrow which again is an afternoon game at 107 at Rogers Center. Follow Red Sox baseball live with the MLB.com at bad app stay up to the moment with game day live game video highlights and more. Download MLB.com at bat. It's the number one app for live baseball on your smartphone and tablet today. Any adjustment that the pitchers have to make with a different umpire back? There's only been a couple of innings, but what do you think? I really don't think so. I mean, I, I think you know it's so early in the ball game that both guys are still establishing their own stuff in the game. I don't think there's really been a strike zone established by Demuro and. Uh, I you know quite frankly I, I don't think that's going to have an effect on either one of the pitches I think the weight may have an effect but uh, certainly not the strike zone the Red Sox coming back out onto the diamond now as Porcello will finally get a chance to throw again most pitchers will tell you that they do have a general idea from umpire to umpire how the strike zone is called and you just kind of say OK new guy let's see I know how he likes to call a game let's Let's start thinking about that. That was a pretty quick change. Yeah, right now only about a 10 minute delay. And Gorman will take over behind the plate. So it gets a little more challenging for the other two guys. And, you know, they were on the first baseline talking about things. They've been through this before. There's a, a definite process that they use when there's only three umpires. They're not used to it because that's not the format generally. But they understand where their positions are supposed to be given any hit and any situation that comes up. So Walcott will be down the third baseline and Nick Lentz is the umpire at first base. And they'll have to cover second base. The count is one ball and two strikes on Travis with two down. 
And no score here in Toronto in the bottom of the second inning. Travis the man who fouled that off wickedly into the face mask of Mike DeMuro. We'll get you an update on Mike when they get it to us. Now the one two pitch finally from Porcello. Two and two. Travis activated from the disabled list just a couple of days ago began the season rehabbing an injured left shoulder after having surgery in the offseason. Ground ball to Bogarts on the charge and gets him. That was close, but he got him. One, two, three in the end. And after two, we have no score. Billy and Jenny take you on a journey at the intersection of where sports and dining meet. Dining playbook on Nesson, driven by New England Chevy dealers. Chris Young will lead things off here in the third. Red Sox trying to get the offense going, each side with one hit. Young, Vasquez, and Betts against Roman. He deals ball one. Young getting the start in left field today, hitting 259 with one home run. He's 0 for 3 against Stroman. Will Topper. Donaldson with a bare hand throws and got him as Smoke held the base. One man out. A pretty nice footwork by Smoke over at first base. First of all, a bare handed play on the big bounce, as you can see right there. And uh, Donaldson will throw it behind the runner. And he has smoke actually has to go back behind the runner to make the catch. It's a blind catch almost. Oh you know, yeah, I almost can't see the baseball as it's coming to you at first base. You got the runner in the way, the ball's going behind him. You lose it for a second and pick it up. In there for a strike on Christian Vasquez hitting 223. Had a key hit last night. Two run single in the seventh inning. That pulled the Sox to within five to four. They would eventually tie it in the eighth, losing on a two run eighth inning home run by Donaldson. You see Young in the starting lineup today. Kind of a nice move by John Farrell. Strollman, a tough righty. Swihart had not looked good at the plate really since his two doubles on Wednesday or two triples on Wednesday night. And I think he just wanted to give him a breather against a really tough right handed pitcher and let your veteran go try him. Stroman five and one a 389 ERA coming in.
He's part of a very solid starting rotation which came into the series leading the majors in innings pitched. Ranking in the top three in ERA and opponents batting average. Up the middle and solidly hit for a single. Vasquez with his first career hit against Stroman now one for six. Now, nice to see Vasquez pick up a couple of hits over the last few days. He's been working very hard uh, in his off time on his offense. Trying to get that proper swing down and he's had a couple of real nice swings over the last two games. Certainly last night. Uh, and again here this afternoon to pick up a base hit in his first at bat. Not a lot of off time for a starting catcher is there Jerry. No. A lot of work to do and basically. For those guys the defense comes first. Mookie Betts has hit a bit of a skid here 0 for his last 16. He was 0 for 4 last night. And Toronto has been very rough on him. In the early going this season through nine games now Mookie is three for thirty five against Toronto pitching. And I don't see anything in particular that they're doing against him that's any different than anybody else. And he hit an absolute rocket in his first at bat and just came up empty. Fouls that one away on a fastball. I mean if anything you know which they probably should be and most teams do they try to keep the ball away from bets. Because if you miss uh, middle in. He's so quick. That's when he hit those line drive home runs. Pedroia doubled his first time up. He's on deck. No score in the third. And Stroman with a 1 2. DraftKings is the official one day fantasy baseball partner of the Red Sox. Experience the thrill of playing on DraftKings right now. Play free daily using the promo code Nesson at DraftKings.com. Stroman has had Mookie's number. Here's the 2 2. Fouled off third base. Mookie has been a much better hitter at Fenway than he has been on the road away from Boston batting 218. Vasquez aboard with one down. And a little right hander deals, and he swings and misses to strike him out. He pulled the string. Now a lot of off speed pitches to Betts in that at bat. He showed him a curveball. Now he shows him the changeup to pick up the strikeout and a good one down and away. You see that late movement as it dips and dips down out of the strike zone, and Betts can't stay off it. Two down Pedroia the batter a double his first time up. So he has reached base in 29 in a row against the Blue Jays. What's Terry's record. Jerry hit in 26 straight games against Toronto that is the all time record by any opponent against the Blue Jays. Look at the numbers right there. Yeah that's you know when they were they were an expansion team back then so it was like easy pickings. <laughs> You're not fooling anybody. Fastball drilled in there on the corner. Jerry thinks they've forgotten up here, but they haven't. I've seen some of the looks he gets when he goes down on the field. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, oh, you again. This is unbelievable to hold a record that long. Topped on the infield. Barney fires on and just does get him. Close play at first base to retire the side. Nothing going on with the Sox. One man left. No score.
Part one of a two-part series to reflect on the career of Hall of Famer Wade Boggs. Don't miss this week's Red Sox report. Tuesday night at 5 in Mesa. Last half of the third inning, Jerry Remy, Steve Lyons, Dave O'Brien with you. Rick Porcello has allowed one hit. He had a long wait as umpire Mike DeMiro got nailed and had to leave the game. So we are down to three umpires. Barney the batter. 301 hitter. He is three for five against Porcello. Give him another one down the line. That's to give chase. Barney take it off. Luki fires and offline. A double for Barney to begin the third inning. Again, another case of a pitch not being exactly where they want it. You're going to see Vasquez set up. He sets up inside, but watch where the ball goes. Out over the plate. And that gives Barney the opportunity to inside out that ball right past pass from Maris. It looked like Mookie got there in time to maybe get him at second base, but the throw's going to be off target a little bit. And no problem for Barney to pick up the double. So he continues to swing the bat well against Porcello. Wolf of six in his career. It's all he wants to do is hit the ball the other way. Now Pilar's going to try to go to the other way to get him to third base. Kevin Pilar, 249 hitter. Outstanding defensive center fielder. Here's the throw down to second base. It's high and it's into center field, but he's going to stay right there. Bit of a bobble there by Jackie, but no advance by Barney. Uh, but what I love about what Jackie did right there is look at the closing speed. Look at him. He knows what's going on here. He's got nothing better to do but back up this play. Porcello goes down, but watch, watch Bradley. Center field coming right away. If he doesn't close that gap, Barney gets up and goes to third. And Vasquez with a misfire. As you said, he knocked down the pitcher. Got jammed there in a foul ball. That's a tough pitch to move the other way that time. <laughs> that two seam fastball that comes uh, barreling in on your hands. Yeah, a, that's an impossible pitch to hit the other way. It almost hit him. <laughs> this guy will swing at everything, though. Look at this pitch bearing in on there. Almost got his back leg trying to go the other way. Fair ball down the line. There comes Barney rounding third, heading into second base. Pilar, he just wears out the Red Sox, and that makes it one to nothing. Well, you go back the last 22 games, he's hitting about 385 against Boston. You know, it's amazing. I mean, he fouls off a ball that's, that's nearly near his leg, and then he hits one that's up above his shoulders. He actually goes up on his tiptoes to make contact and drive it down the first base line. Now, Hanley was still playing in very tight. I'm not quite sure why. With two strikes, they were not going to bug in that situation. Pallad drives it by him and drives in a run. That sends up Joey Bats. Bautista 0 for 1. Batting out of the leadoff slot. Toronto grabs the early lead. In there for strike one. Porcello and Vasquez got to get a little careful about being predictable. A lot of times with two strikes. He did it to Josh Donaldson. He also did it to Travis. Two strikes is an automatic high fastball. Both those guys took it. Pilar is looking for it. Nobody out to run in for the Blue Jays and the 0-1. A little looper foul. Now the amazing thing to me about the Pilar swing is that he actually went up on his tiptoes to make contact on it. You don't see that very often. <laughs> That's how high that pitch was. He is 31 for his last 81 against Red Sox pitching. And we know the damage Bautista can do and has done against the Red Sox in his career. And against Porcello. Bautista has been an interesting case this year since they've been hitting him leadoff. He's been doing nothing but walking far and away leads the American League in walks with 39. Still nothing in two. People around the Blue Jays are talking about it's pretty impressive because everybody in the world knows he's a free agent at the end of the year. He wants to throw up those huge numbers again to get the next big deal. And he's been very, very patient at the plate taking those walks. They have a couple of sluggers who are going to be free agents. Encarnacion, another one. Can't sign both of them, can you? Bautista's 35 years old. 
And the 0-2 way outside. He can still hit it a mile. So can that guy. Donaldson on deck. But they come at you with Bautista Donaldson and Encarnacion, don't they? The first three hitters in their lineup. One, two. Floated towards center. Bradley coming on. He's going to have to pull up. He took a slip as well. Pilar in the third will stop there on a bloop single by Bautista. And one thing Brian Butterfield was telling me yesterday when the when the dome is open, the roof is open here, and the sun shining, these turf becomes very spongy. And they warn the outfielders about those balls that are going to fall in front of them. They could bounce up over the head. Looks like it had an effect on Jackie Bradley right there. He put the brakes on to make sure that ball was not going to bounce over his head. This turf can never be as bouncy as it used to be here. Or like the turf that used to be in the old Homer Dome in Minnesota. Boy, you had to back off of everything. You'd, you'd look at a ball like that if you were the guy on second base like P Pilar, have to hold up because you weren't sure if the center fielder could catch it. And then once it hit the ground, you could score from second by the time the ball would come down out of the air. Now there's three consecutive hits now against Porcello. And here's Donaldson, 0 for 1 with a pop to second. A strike. Donaldson hitting 255. Pair of home runs last night. Even with the four hits last night, he's only hitting 220 in the month of May. The 0 1. Took a big old hack there to make it 0 2. You know, the Red Sox right now in this situation hoping to minimize the damage and get a double play ball get two outs in this inning and if they do they give up another run but they'll take that at this stage this has potential to be a very large inning one nothing Blue Jays runners at first and third and the 0 2 to Donaldson. When you are in a potential double play situation in the infield you have to shorten up in order to turn to double play. This is as deep of double play depth as you'll ever see. One two to Donaldson again upstairs a bit outside with the fastball two and two. And I think that speaks to how hard Donaldson hits the ball. Yeah also to you take into consideration speed of the runner when you position yourself for the double play and Donaldson uh, not a great runner down the first baseline he's had some injuries. I think right now I just worried about keeping him in the ballpark. Yeah. There's another guy you have to worry about keeping in the ballpark. Encarnacion. This would be a big, big strikeout for Porcello. The 2 2. All filled up now on Donaldson. Porcello, of course, gets a lot of double plays. He always has. He can see to run to turn two right here. I don't think you can give in right here. I don't think you can just throw fastball down Broadway. Donaldson getting a time. Pilar at third base, Batista at first base. Nobody out in the 3 2 home. And he spoils another one. His second home run, which proved to be the game winner in the eighth inning last night off of Koji, just got over the right field wall. He barely cleared it. 328 in that corner. Went about 330. <laughs> but before that, he had smoked one into the upper deck down the left field line. Foul. 
So he goes foul line to foul line. Here comes a 3 2 pitch. And that just wow. missed. I'm not sure exactly where, but it is ball four. That ball's right down the middle, right at the bottom of the strike zone. Are you kidding me? Wow. That's just strike three, is what that is. I mean, whether they don't give it to him because he didn't hit location, is that it? I mean, got to be it. He That's missed what, out over the plate. That's right down the middle. That's what uh, really aggravates me, you know, because you'll see where Vasquez is set up outside. And because the pitch doesn't go outside, they don't get the call. And that's always been a pet peeve of mine. I mean, that ball's a strike. That ball's right down the middle of the plate, above the knees. It's got to be called a strike. And because Vasquez had to move his glove back toward the center of the plate, that's why I don't think he got the call. And you know, Jerry, that's that same pitch. That was the, the sinking fastball, kind of a backdoor sinking fastball. So he has to set up there. In order to get him to throw the ball out off that plate, he has to set up off the plate. Wow, what a miss that is. Yeah, that, that's that's huge. Because now the bases are loaded for another guy who can crush it. Encarnacion doubled his first time up. He has all sorts of numbers against Porcello. 13 for 33 with three home runs. Nobody out and no place to put him. And in for a strike. That was a good pitch, but it wasn't nearly as good as the one that Donaldson took for ball four. <laughs> I wish Donaldson would have swung at that pitch because it might have ended up being a ground ball double play. Oh, he hit it. Oh, and it's off the fingertips. And Did he are, swing? They are getting some help here. Hey, if he swung at that pitch, that's a that's a strike. Should be. And that is going to be the case, I believe here, that that's a foul ball. That's all John, John Farrell. Farrell wants him to ask. Did he go? Well, the first base umpire has already given the save sign. I did see him do that. So apparently, if we look at it from the side, we'll probably get a better look to see if he did swing or not. Oh, look at Carl Willis. He is really hot. Yeah, he, he's hot at the first base umpire because the first base umpire, as soon as they looked down to him, gave the save sign, which means there was no swing. So it's right now ruled a hit batsman, but see what the Red Sox choose to do here. I think Tori Lavello's discussing the options about whether or not they want to challenge it here. And out comes John Farrell again. Right now, a hit batsman to force in a run. That's a swing. I mean, there's no question that's a swing. And they are going to take a look. So they will go to review on this. We've had a slew of these recently on these check swings, and whether it's a foul ball or a hit batsman. But if it is eventually ruled a hit batsman that forces in a run and that comes on the heels of Donaldson taking ball four and we should have been strike three. Well am I the lone ranger on this because you know it's a little tough to tell from this angle but I thought for sure that he did swing at that. I thought he swung too Jerry and if it hits him that's a swing not a hit batsman. Right. That's a swing. That's a swing. And your back comes that far out over home plate. You're attempting to hit the ball. They're not going to call it a swing, though. No. They're not. They say he got hit by the pitch. That forces in the run. Back so to Pilar, back. bad calls. Pilar scores, and Encarnacion is aboard. And the bases are reloaded. And Saunders, the hitter, he struck out his first time up. And still nobody out. Encarnacion picks up the RBI, his 37th. And that one is flick foul for strike one. So things not going to Red Sox way, certainly from the umpire's point of view in this inning. Not going well for Porcello, that's for sure. He's allowed three hits, walked a man, and now hit batsman. 2 0 Toronto. Fastball in for a strike. 
You look at Saunders numbers with the nine home runs but just 17 RBIs. He's hitting a lot of solo shots however. He's got the bases loaded out there for him right now. Oh and two on Saunders. Ground ball to Bogarts. He goes to the bag for the out there and guns on to first base to complete the double play. And another run comes in to score to make it three to nothing. Now the Red Sox needed that desperately. I mean, this had disaster written all over it. This, I mean, you're looking at a possible six run inning. Now they get the double play. They get two quick outs. They do give up another run, but it's still a manageable ball game. His Bogats, he'll take that ball himself. He's close enough to the bag. Tag throw and get that double play to get two quick outs. They do give up another run, though. No RBI for Saunders. Here's Smoke. He's 0 for 1 with a ground out. Donaldson down to third on the twin killing. And now Travis Shaw will move over to the right side of the diamond. On the shift. 3 0 Toronto here in the third. High fly, well hit left center. Jackie Bradley backing up into the shade, and he'll make the play on the warning track. And that will retire the side. Rough inning for Porcello and the Red Sox. 3 0 Toronto. I'll preview the 100th running of the race on Nessenfuel.com. Also, be sure to check out after the game for the checkered flag and the complete race breakdown. Xander Bogarts to lead things off here as we go to the fourth inning. 3 0. Toronto in front. Bogarts, Ortiz, and Ramirez looking to solve Marcus Stroman. So far, just two Red Sox hits. Xander with 68 hits to lead the American League. Stroman's one of those guys who can really get rolling too. And you look up, it's the eighth inning, and you've done nothing with him, and the day is gone. So you have to get him when you can. 4-0 lifetime against the Red Sox. There's a drive out to left field. Racing back Saunders. Racing back. That one sailing off the top of the wall and gone. It's a home run. There's Andrew Bogart's number six. And now the hitting streak gets to 21 in a row. The Red Sox are on the board. Right off the top of the wall. Now the way things are going for Bogarts, I might have to push my estimates up a little bit higher than the home runs I expect from him. 
Gets the ball inside again, and that's the big difference in him taking those inside pitches and pulling them with power to left field. Right, it's a rare combination to see a guy cover both sides of the plate like he has been for the last month. David lines that one into left field. That's going to keep on rolling up against the wall. Turning into second base. <laughs> and another double. <laughs> Speedway proud to be New England's first choice for value and convenience for every Red Sox homer. Speedway donates $500 to Boston Children's Hospital. Stop by a Speedway near you and pick up your Speedy Rewards card and start earning points today. Now hopefully we'll be looking back to this, the uh, double play that Bogarts did start last inning to get the Red Sox two outs and prevent them from allowing you know maybe six or seven runs in that inning. Well, it's a good thing that Saunders kind of kicked that ball around down in the corner because that would have been a close play at second base, I think. I think he hurried himself and dropped it a couple times and then wasn't able to get the ball back into second base in time. But it is a double all the way. Hanley Ofawani's flight out to left. He has enjoyed hitting in this ballpark in his career 328 lifetime. Two and oh. Incidentally fans at home may be wondering about when you lose an umpire as we have today in Mike DeMiro the home plate umpire struck in a face mask had to leave and we're working with three umpires. How many can you get down to what happens if Mike Gorman who had to take over behind home plate what happens if he gets drilled in the mask or suffers an injury. They can work according to the rules with one umpire. That would be very interesting. Never seen that before. No. no nobody wants close. to. <laughs> the 3 0 pitch and it is down low. So ball four and Hanley is aboard runners on at first and second nobody out. Now just to add to that point I would say that last inning the Red Sox were working with no one by us. <laughs> <laughs> on that that call Rick Porcello might agree with you. Yeah. <laughs> Very strong call and the uh, no swing call and <laughs> two hitters in a row that's yeah, for sure. Exactly. <laughs> I also think that Carl Willis I've never seen him quite as hot as we saw him last inning. I mean, John Farrell was borderline restraining him. Yeah. At one point. I was amazed at how quickly they came back with the ruling that it was a hit by by pitch there didn't take him long at all Jerry you and I both thought he swung and I think if it was a Red Sox hitter up there we'd say the same thing. Yeah absolutely. Jackie Ofawani is grounded out to first. Red Sox trying to rally here against Stroman. And two on and he knocks that one foul out of play. With men in scoring position, Jackie is hitting 385 this season. Ortiz at second, Ramirez at first. And Stroman for the first time in some trouble today in the fourth inning. That one up the middle and caught by Barney a flip into second and a double play. David Ortiz could not get back in and he's doubled off. Just like that, two down. Now, in my opinion, there's not much you can do. Now, watch Ortiz get a secondary lead. He doesn't really break the third. He goes back towards second and still gets uh, caught at second base. That little bloop right there, and then that sidearm flip in time to get Ortiz going back to the bag, and that takes the Red Sox out of a potential big inning. Jerry, you talked about it in yesterday's last night's ball game as well. The double play that that Donaldson turned. Not Stroman. A, mm. a big play in the fourth inning. Another big play right here. Stroman getting himself out of trouble. And I agree with you. I mean, sometimes, especially if you're Ortiz, you got to get a secondary lead. It takes a big hit to score you. You got to be able to try to score on a base hit. Line drive, and that one is caught by Donaldson. A bullet there. So the Red Sox have a frustrating inning a home run a double only get the one run three to one Toronto.
tomorrow an all new Charlie Moore outdoors Charlie heads to Minnesota to fish in the land of 10,000 lakes see what big fish that he hauls in tomorrow at six right here in Nessa. And the Red Sox down three to one had a chance for a big inning snuffed out with a double play a homer a double a walk they only get the one out of it despite some hard hit balls against Stroman. Russell Martin here as he stings a ground foul he's 0 for 1 in this one. Travis on deck and then Darwin Barney for Toronto hits her even at four. And the 0 2. Martin's been trying a little bit of everything to get out of the slump. His hands are held further back away from his body. Very similar to the way he hit when he was a Dodger so many years ago. Take a look at where those hands are. Starting him much further back and away from his body. 2-2 pitch waved at and missed and down to go strike three as we go down to Garen. Thanks OB. Well Brock Holt is still in the general conditioning phase of his recovery process but he is making improvements. John Farrell said that they'll start picking up baseball activity and Holt was scheduled to throw and do some running on the field today. Also Ryan Hannigan is feeling better and has made a lot of improvements since experiencing neck stiffness these past few days and Farrell said they fully expect him to catch Stephen Wright on Monday. And guys we've had no update on Mike DeMurro. All right, Garrett, keep us posted on the umpire, of course, as that one is fouled out of play by Travis. Mike DeMiro at home plate early in the game with this man batting. Devin Tra Travis took a shot off the face mask. It's good to see Brock Holt walking around with a smile on his face after battling those concussive symptoms. And feeling much, much better. Here comes the 0-1 pitch. I think the team misses something without him available. His energy. Well, I think you're right. The 1-1 one, one will miss. And the count two balls and one strike. Porcello has walked one man. It was Donaldson in the third inning. Of course, he doesn't walk many. Broken bad looper on one hop, Bogarts. Two up and two down. <laughs> Jerry, that's one of those scary plays yep. where you can almost play it into a bad hop. He wasn't sure if he wanted to catch it or get it on the bounce, and then you get it in between, and you're like, whoa, wait a minute here. Yeah, the problem with this is it was hit toward the end of the bat, and you just don't know. It's hard to read that ball sinking on you, and you got to make a decision. You know, do I go in and charge it, try to catch it in the air, or do I stay back? And when you stay back, it's always dangerous. But that time, uh, Bogart's able to make the play by staying back. Barney up there ripped a double and scored a run in the third inning when he got three runs off Porcello. So he is now four for six in his career against Rick. And there's another one into the alley. Nobody out there out of the turf. It'll be up against the fence. Barney wants three bases, rounding second, and he's going to get there. A two out triple. So now five for seven against him. Uh, what a day for Barney so far. I mean, Tillowitzki goes on to disable this with a, a quad problem, and Barney steps in. He's going to double, and he's going to triple now with two outs. In the fourth inning, making three bases all the way there. He's making that decision on his own. No need for help from the third base coach on that. And a slide just because I think he wanted to slow himself up. Yeah. That's all he needed that slide for. He's a valuable guy to have on a ball club. Can play all the infield positions. Primarily a second baseman in his big league career. Here's Pilar. He doubled and drove in a run. His first time up as he looks at a strike. Darwin Barney was the starting shortstop on the 06 and 07 national title teams out of Oregon State.
Oh, one hammered down the line, but it hooks, and it is a foul ball. Not by much. I love Pilar's reaction after contact. He's standing in the batter's box with one foot just kind of leaning toward first base. Watch Pilar. Wants to keep it in fair territory. <laughs> Not going to happen. Hooked it too much. One of the best defensive outfielders in the game. Here's the 0-2. He cuts in, misses, and down he goes for a strike three. They strand that runner at third base, but it's still 3-1 to one Toronto. Red Sox season in game number 49. The Red Sox would beat the Indians 3 to 1. Oil can Boyd with his seventh win of the year. Jim Rice drove in two of the three Red Sox runs. Well, Toronto has three, a 3 to 1 advantage here. And Chris Young leading things off in the fifth inning. Young and then Vasquez and then Betts against Marcus Stroman. The last season was going to be one of their top of the order guys but in spring training he tore his ACL on a bunning drill and they lost him until September and he came back and gave him a big lift down the stretch and he is a great friend of David Price now <laughs> I'm not so sure <laughs> here's the one two to young he checks and it is inside. Price was asked about whether or not he thought he'd get what kind of reception he'd get and he said I'm not sure I'm sure it'll be mixed I know a lot of people wanted me to come back but I'm hearing that Strowman's the one guy that's leading the charge to get everybody to boo me it's because they're very close to swing and a miss strike three so young retired and one man gone <laughs> nice friend. We're going to be staying right here after the third out of this inning for a special behind the scenes look at what happens in between innings. Hard hit and that's a fair ball down the line by Vasquez. He is two for two. It bounces back for Saunders and it'll be a double for Christian Vasquez. So he's had a couple of great swings today. And yeah, came into the game 0 for 5 against Stroman, but 2 for 2 here today. The single back in the third inning. Now the double laced on that left field line.
Here's Mookie Betts now trying to get out of this 0 for 17. And get another run on the board for the Red Sox here. He's lined to right, struck out today. One man gone, a runner at second. And one of the other interesting things that I thought Price had to say when I was talking to him earlier today, he said when he played here in Toronto down the stretch, it was the first time in his career he felt he had a home field advantage when he pitched. Topped on the infield. Donaldson throws and it's not going to be in time. Nobody at second base, but finally they recover and they move Barney over there. Runners will be safe on at first and third on the single. That's like a swing bunt down the third base line, and Donaldson get rid of the ball as quickly as he possibly could, but Betts has too much speed. Has to go to the backhand, makes the throw on the uh, run, and not in time at first base. Now there was nobody covering second base, but they quickly got a couple of guys in motion to get there just in case Betts thought about going to second. Looked like to me like he took a lean toward second base too. Does the Pedroia with a double and a ground out one for two. He continues to beat up on Toronto pitching. He'll take a strike. Jerry what do you think about this. We saw Donaldson make that play a few other times and he barehanded it every time. Did he glove that one because he was afraid if he messed that up with Vasquez rounding third yeah, he think, might go home. Absolutely agree with you. I think that you know you got to you got to be. Extra cautious with a man in scoring position. You can't afford to, to have that ball bounce by you, so you go to the glove. But I think either way, Steve, it's going to be a base hit for Betts anyway. Yep. He takes off and it's lined to right field. Fair ball into the corner. Vasquez in. Betts heading for third. Butterfield will wave him around. There will be no throw to the plate. It's a two run double for Pedroia as he rocketed that one down into the right field corner. His second two base hit of the day. Oh, he was swinging it. Mookie Betts got fooled at second base. Darwin Barney acted like he was going to be able to make a play, and Betts didn't know where the ball was. And it looks like Pedroia right there, too, has got his mind made up. He's going to the opposite field today because he's done it a couple of times. And, and you're right, Betts got, he kind of hesitated between uh, second and third base, but then was able to turn on the Jets. You can see right there he's getting deep by the shortstop and I think that he didn't know exactly where the ball was. He almost slid. Yeah the shortstop was given the, the action because he was off on the pitch like contact was made and it was going to be a double play and that's yes. what slowed him up. So the Red Sox have tied it at three. Only one out. Xander Bogarts now he's belted a home run and he's grounded out to short. In for strike one. Not talking about Deegan at second base, and you know he's off on the pitch, so he doesn't know where the ball is. Now watch the shortstop come to the bag and act like he's going to take the throw. That messes up Mookie Betts. He doesn't know where the baseball is, so the first thing you do is look toward your third base coach. He's going to live. He's the only friend you get out there to let you know. Ground ball, base hit, and another one for Bogarts. Pedroia will stop at third base, and they're going to be safe at first and third. And the Red Sox suddenly have strung together four consecutive hits off of Stroman. And this all in front of David Ortiz. And Walker, the pitching coach, will pay a mound visit. Yeah, once again, Bogats gets that ball inside and he hits on top of it. A top spin ground ball that's going to get through the infield. And Pedroia has to hold up at third base. So the last two days, the offense has been in a bit of a slumber for the most part, but waking up now again. Yeah, that doesn't usually last with these guys. Talking about facing an awfully tough right-handed pitcher in Strowman, too. You come into Toronto and have to see him after losing two straight games. Red Sox season ticket holders experience the best seats. For information on becoming a season ticket holder, visit RedSox.com slash season tickets or call 877-RED-SOX-9. Well, here comes Big Poppy. Ortiz today with a double and a ground out as runners at first and third with one away in a tie game, 3-3. That's not a strike either. That's a breaking ball. That's away from Ortiz, and fortunately, he was called for the first strike and not the third. Last two innings, the Sox getting some great swings against Strowman. Here's the 0-1. I don't generally like to get on umpires. It's it's not my gig, but they have not been good today. 
Gorman not originally supposed to be behind the plate. The 1 1 inside. Well, you know, not now Martin's upset behind the play because he feels like he's got a strike on the inside corner, and I agree with him. He's turning around asking uh, Gorman where, where that pitch was. So he's hearing it from both dugouts and from both teams. So Martin wants the plate to be about 24 inches wide then. He wants the one away <laughs> and the one in. And it's big poppy at the plate. You're not getting both of them. Look at the last one. Two and two. Bogarts at first, Pedroia at third. And two runs in in this inning. Tried to hold up on a pitch that got him on the foot. Home plate umpire is going to call a swing and a miss for strike three. And Bogarts advancing down to second base. And Ortiz is complaining, I get hit by the pitch. Here comes John Farrell again. Now we got the same situation as we had with Encarnacion. I've never seen this twice in the same game. No. And the question is, that looks like they're letting Bogart stay at second. Is it not then a dead ball if it hits Ortiz I think because he be. swung at it? I think it should be. Then yeah, Bogey gonna, would have to come back to first. They are gonna, yeah. They're going to send him back to first base, I think. He is. So Ortiz will hobble off. Yeah, they, hey, he swung. He did swing at it. There's no question he did swing at that one. So they got that one right. The first one, in my opinion, they got wrong. That one they did get correct. Yep. And they do send Bogots back to first base because it is a dead ball. And now two down for Hanley Ramirez. So it's a strikeout for David. And one of the very few times, I mean, David's amazing at this. One of the very few times where he got fooled by a pitch and swung at a pitch out of the zone. He is so good at just spitting on pitches that you're trying to get him out with. Red Sox with a go ahead run at third base with two down now. And into the dirt. Nice scoop by Martin. And Martin took a chance there with a man at third base. He really did. Instead of trying to block the ball, he tried to backhand it. He's fortunate the ball ended up in his glove. A little Johnny Bench move there, trying to pick it instead of blocking it. That ball leg gets by him. Uh, you're talking about the Red Sox having a 4 3 lead. Strowman's 1 0. A strike. Wow. We're right at the bottom of the strike zone, barely on the corner. Gorman is having a tough day. Now, the Red Sox have been doing a pretty good job of keeping their cool up there. That's not a pitch anybody wants to swing at. And Hanley didn't say a thing about it. Hanley sitting at four home runs right now. You expect that power to ramp up. Hanley's saying, hey, how about uh, let's take some time out there. He feels like he's getting quick pitched. That's where Mike DeMuro got drilled. The original home plate umpire got staggered. Vasquez trying to keep him from going all the way down. He had to leave the game. And Gorman, who was umpiring second base, had to take over behind the plate. Runner goes. Bogart's on the move on the swing and the miss. And he goes hurtling into second base, diving in there. With the theft, Pedroia holding it third. Very good jump at first base by Bogarts. You see, he's not that far off the bag, but uh, the quick first couple of steps and not even a throw to second base. Seven stolen bases for Bogey. Now caught, caught just one time. One ball and two strikes on Hanley. Two men in scoring position. Big at bat. That missed away. The crowd wanted it. I don't blame them for getting everything else. <laughs> Two seamer this time trying to bring it back to the outside corner. You can see Russell Martin pulling it into the corner, but not getting the call.
Strowman's 2 2. Well outside to fill up the count. Now, if he walks him, Jackie Bradley is up next. Red Sox have really made Strowman work in this inning. He's allowed four hits here in the fifth. And two runs. Here's the 3 2. Line shot down the line. Pedroia scores. Bogart scores. Ramirez heading into second base. The throw, the tag, and he is out at second. But both runs come on in to score, and the Red Sox have taken the lead. And now on top, five to three. Don't go anywhere as we stay in the park here in Toronto. When did paying for airfare become so unfair? At Southwest, we believe in transparency. Transparency means we don't dream up ways we can trick you into paying more. It's why we still let two bags fly free and don't have change fees. So our low fares stay low. Just the way you like it. Thank you for dining with us. Hope to see you again soon. Thank you so much. I got this. Just got to reach the check. <laughs> oh, almost there. I can't reach it. If you have alligator arms, you avoid picking up the check. What? That's what you do. I got this. Thanks, Dennis. If you want to save 15% or more on car insurance, you switch to Geico. It's what you do. Oh, that is good crispy duck. We are the Coors Brewing Company. Just an absolutely stunning day here in Toronto. They haven't had many so far this spring. Handy Ramirez has just put the Red Sox in front with a two run single. He was thrown out trying to make it a double on uh, the play at second base. So Porcello with an advantage here. So we go to the bottom of the fifth, 5 3. Porcello was about to deliver, but Bautista got a late timeout granted. Now the pitch to Hanley was a changeup and not a good one. It stayed up and out over the plate, and Hanley able to stay back and line that ball to the left field and it looks like he might have been safe at second base looks like the foot might have gone in before the tag was made now the Red Sox don't have any more challenges but had he been called safe I bet Toronto doesn't challenge outside for a ball on Batista who's gone one for two with a single umpiring has played a big role in this one Ever since DeMuro was knocked to the sidelines. Two balls, one strike. Batista, the top of the order, then Donaldson and Encarnacion. Working with three umpires. Sox have out hit Toronto nine to five here into the bottom of the fifth inning. Huge base hit by Hanley. High fly into left, but not very deep. Young near the line. One man away. Don't miss WB Mason. Extra innings live right after the game. TC and Dennis Eckersley break down the game, and you'll also hear from Rick Porcello and John Farrell. Whatever, whenever, wherever, who but WB Mason. You know, this may sound crazy, Dave uh, and Steve, but the fact is, I think the biggest play in the game so far has been the double play that Saunders hit into. They had three runs in that inning. 
And it looks like they were going to put the game out to lunch. They really did. And they could have scored six or seven. The Red Sox gave up the third run, but they got two outs, which minimized the damage, I thought, big time in that inning. That was the third inning. Knocked into left field. That'll be a base hit for Donaldson. Beat goes on for him. That comes with one man out. Yeah, that was the type of wipeout inning that you see in games where you throw a six spot on the other team and you can never recover from it. Exactly. Rick Porcello has not lost to this Toronto team this season in two starts. He's 2 0. Gets Encarnacion now. Encarnacion has doubled and been hit by a pitch. He's homered six times this month. And he'll look at ball one. I just think for Encarnacion, the only time you can come in is to show him in off the plate and then you have to pitch him away. Donaldson on at first and a 1 0 tried for the inside corner but missed. Porcello's last two starts have been short five and five and two thirds. Yet he came to Toronto tied for second in the American League and wins with seven seven and two. Foul there at home plate. The playoffs talking about Saunders grounding into the double play the uh, Bogart six year three and to me that was a huge play in this game because they could have put six seven runs on the board and you know the mindset of a team when you're down by that much and you're facing a guy like Stroman it's like yeah, you know we don't know if we can come back on this guy with that kind of deficit well he, they kept the game manageable and I thought that was a big part of it and they wound up with three runs in that inning but double double single walk hit batsman could have gone haywire and a fastball in there for a strike and it was kind of a strange at bat from Saunders here's a guy who's your number four hitter he's got nine home runs and I know you like to keep the ball in the middle of the field when the bases are loaded but when you're a number four hitter and you're supposed to hit out of the park do you want a little inside out swing like he gave you right there into a double play ball go up there and hit it the three one to the designated hitter will not be made and kind of see on thirty nine home runs a season ago. He does not strike out a ton for a big home run hitter. Two two. In play to third. Shaw to second on to first double play. So Porcello and he gets a lot of those gets a twin killing. 5-3, the Sox have the lead as we go to the sixth.
Plain Ridge Park Casino Fenway Concert Series this summer, July 15th. Plenty of great seats still available. Get your tickets now at RedSox.com slash Dead and Company. Gentlemen on your left there, Jack McCormick, our director of team travel, does a phenomenal job getting the Red Sox all over the country. Take it into sunshine today. And Sun Nick has a shot out to right center field. Jackie Bradley's going to drop that one in for extra bases. And it takes a skip and then over the wall, that'll be an automatic double. Wow. That cost him a base. Certainly did. That ball stays in the ballpark. You're talking about three bases for Bradley Jr. Instead, he picks up his 13th double of the season to get the Red Sox going here in the sixth inning. Looked like a little cut fastball that time from Stroman, and uh, right over the heart of the plate, the ball bouncing right at the top of the wall in for the ground rule double. So now you begin to think, you know, Jackie has hits in his last two games since the hitting streak ended. As Travis Shaw gets in there and takes one outside. And he was left in the on deck circle the night yeah. it ended. You know, he was gunning for 30 in a row. What might have been? And hit two bullets to the wall in that ball game. He did. Red Sox ahead 5 3. Pressing for more in a high deep drive right field. And you can kiss this one goodbye. Travis Shaw, the number seven, a two run blast. And the Red Sox are chasing Stroman. Here in Toronto, and now lead it seven to three. Well, you've got to be impressed for a couple of reasons. You know, first of all, Shaw has the man at second base, so his number one priority is moving him to third base with less than two outs. And then he gets the bonus. He gets the home run. That ball elevated right there, a changeup at 83 miles an hour. Now we've seen a couple of changeups today from Stroman that have stayed upstairs, and he's been hurt on them. And he was really hurt on this pitch to Travis Shaw. Two out of the last three hitters, in fact, left changeups up, and it cost him four runs. That has quieted a big crowd here at Rogers Center as Chris Young gets in. So seven home runs and a 35 RBIs for Travis. And, and his dominance of the Toronto Blue Jays continues on. Came into this game 20 for his last 50 in the last 14 games against them. This is the second time in a row as we look at the Eastern Lexus dealer stat line here on Stroman. Hard hit to third, knocked down by Donaldson. Will he have a play? He throws, and it's too late. Uh, a hot smash. He could not gobble it up. See that ruleless down at third base. Uh, I mean, it's got a chance, and I'm not yeah. so sure. It's got a chance to go for a base hit, but I, you know, I'm kind of. It should be an error, but I'm he on, didn't want to catch fence. it. Sometimes, if you hit it so hard, the guy doesn't want to catch it. You think it should be a hit. Donaldson let the ball kind of play him a little bit by staying back on it and went down to one knee. So I would say it's probably going to be an error. We'll see how they rule it. Yep, you are correct. Chavez getting ready in their bullpen. Runner goes and it is mishandled by Martin on the swing and the miss and down to second base is young. You know I don't understand uh, you know when you you're, you're pitching in a situation like Stroman is and you've got Travis Shaw at the plate you get a man at second base why in the world would you throw him a change up when you haven't had a good one all day and you know with the, what Shaw is trying to do he's trying to pull the ball trying to hook it over to the right side. I mean he's trying to advance a runner at least. And so the pitch selection for me doesn't make a lot of sense, especially when you haven't had a good one this afternoon. Red Sox keep on running a stolen base for Young. Here's Vasquez now two for two on the day. The count 0 and 1. Young's first stolen base of the year. Active bullpen for Toronto. Red Sox have knocked around their ace to the tune of 11 hits and seven runs. This is the pitch I'm talking about with a man at second base. That's a changeup, and it's a, just a bad one. It's elevated. It's a little bit away, but Shaw is able to hook it and hook it high enough to get it out of the ballpark. Such an easy swing. Easy power. Floated foul. Vasquez looking for his third hit today. Talking about the stolen base for Young, the Red Sox have now been successful 32 times out of 35 attempts. Yeah, that, that's amazing. And that's a combination of things. You know, it's obviously speed is one of them, but that's 
that's knowing the pitches, knowing the times of the plate, knowing the times of the catches to second base. Play on at second and thrown into shallow center, but Young will not move on to third base. It did not go very far. And you know who it directly relates back to is Ruben Amaro, the first base coach. When I got here today at 930, he was watching video. I asked him what he was doing. And he said, I'm taking times of pitchers moves to home plate, catchers throwing to second base. And he was doing it, you know, at 930 this morning. Stuff that first base coaches never did when you and I were playing. <laughs> Giving these guys on the team better opportunities to steal on certain pitch counts and on certain pitchers. Well, they have they have times, you know, and, and, and anything over a one three from a pitcher, you can probably go because you your average catch is about two to second base. So anything over a one three, you can probably if you get a good good speed, you can take off and go at first base. If you don't have good speed, you've got to be a little bit higher than that, obviously. But, you know, that's all timed out and that's all timed out through video. So they know going into the game that look, if we get out against this guy, we can go. It doesn't you don't have to have blazing speed to be able to do that. And conversely, that's why sometimes you'll see Mookie Betts on first, and you're like, wow, how come he's not stealing? Right. Well, the times don't match up well for him, even with his speed. Here's the 2 2 to Vasquez, with Young at second base and nobody out. And he cuts and misses for strike three. That is the first down of the inning. It brings up Mookie Betts, who beat out an infield single his last time. A's ticket is Boston's trusted source for Red Sox tickets with the best seats at the lowest prices all with a 200 percent guarantee treat yourself for someone special by visiting Ace ticket dot com or by calling one eight hundred my seats on well, the Toronto manager Gibbons is out there and taking the ball away from Stroman that's the second straight time he's been handed the lead against the Red Sox and could not hold it, it was also the case back in April they kind of have his number lately. Red Sox with a 7-3 lead. More in a moment. Nesson is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Transparency, low fares, and nothing to hide. Toronto making a call to the bullpen. It's brought to you by Kia with the Red Sox in front here, 7 to 3. And with a runner at second base. Chavez coming out and taking over for Stroman. Second straight start that their ace has only gone five and a third innings against the Red Sox. They are a relentless offense that just keeps coming at you. We were talking in a break outside of the fact that he did not have a good changeup. He's not a guy that I want to see if I'm a hitter. I think he has electric stuff. Mookie bets one for three and he'll look at strike one. Mookie got on in the fifth inning for the first time today after his infield single and he scored a run. He started the day tied with Ian Kinsler for the major league lead in run scored with 41. Young at second. 
and popped up into right center field. And Pilar coming in looking up into the sunshine and Young back to second base. Two down get expert emergency care without leaving the ballpark at Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center behind a first aid station located behind section 12 on the lower concourse at Fenway. Visit BIDMC.org. Now you talk about some old school stirrups going on there. <laughs> what is that, Jerry? Yeah, that's uh, that's <laughs> that's fake too. It's it's yeah. it's just like a line drawn up some white socks. Painted on there. Pedroia building on a big day. He has doubled twice to the shortstop. Barney had to circle. He fires and he will get him on a good stretch by Smoke. That will retire the side. But the Red Sox had a couple more and have knocked the starter out. There's a reason why the Red Sox and the rest of America run on Dunkin' because Dunkin' iced coffee is consistently smooth and delicious. Dunkin' Donuts coffee, number one in New England. The Boston Red Sox run on Dunkin'. So a cushion here for Porcello as we go to the last half of the sixth inning. He has a four-run lead. He gets Saunders, Smoke, and Martin, and none of these guys have a hit off him so far today. Saunders has struck out and he has been doubled up. Porcello last season had trouble with shut down innings, shutting down the opposition after your team scores runs. Not so difficult with that this year for him. But they went out and got him four last inning, two more this past inning. He threw a zero up last time. How much of last season and his struggles, at least until you know the tail end of the season? Do both of you attribute to pitching to the contract? I mean, having signed a huge contract, a lot of money, a lot of pressure on him to perform. I think that's part of it. I mean, that's just my opinion. You know, I, I think mechanically he was off a little bit. Last year, he was throwing too many high fastballs that were being taken out of the ballpark for home runs. And I think anytime a player comes to a new environment, Regardless of whether you sign a new contract or not, it's, it's an adjustment period. You know, getting used to a, a new clubhouse, a new place to live. Well, he's always been used to Detroit. Uh, you come over where fans are expecting an awful lot out of you because you sign a big contract. And that plays on your head. I, I really believe it does. Now, is that the reason you don't pitch well? I'm not so sure about that. I think it's more inside the body than it is the outside. But the outside pressure gets to you more when you don't pitch well. <laughs> yes, it's a vicious circle. I think it's a combination of, of both. I think he was a little confused as to what type of pitcher he wanted to be. Cut on and missed. He strikes out Saunders. 
Time for a game break. It's brought to you by Jordan's, the furniture store of the Boston Red Sox. Here's TC. Tom, thank you very much. Comes with the best record in baseball at 32 and 14 and a three game winning streak, as TC mentioned. They have World Series on the brain in Chicago and is in for a strike on smoke. You know, I'll be, I think there are very few players out there that get a big contract and then sit around and don't care about it. The reason why they got a big contract is because they care. And I think sometimes they feel like they have to be better instead of being just the player that got them that deal. Do you think that happened with Rick last year? Yeah, I think it was, like I said, the combination of him being a little confused of, as to what kind of pitcher he wanted to be. As Jerry said, we saw way too many high fastballs, kind of wanted to be a strikeout guy. Once he figured it out and mixed in all his pitches, he was better. And then trying to live up to a big deal is a lot of pressure coming to Boston to do that. And, and you guys both know it just is different than Boston look you know in my opinion you know they're all human beings and you look at buckles right now and you know he's he's an easy target for for everybody because of you know how he's performed so far this season but you don't think that that bothers him I mean I don't care how long you've been around this game it, it eats away at you and that's why you know you're not happy when they make the movie it's your competitive spirit that, that takes over that doesn't mean you're right but that's how you feel so then you've got to make the adjustment and say OK well then I'm going to prove you wrong. I'm going to go out and do my job and I'm going to prove you wrong. Porcello strikes out a second man in a row really eats up smoke there. Two up and two down. The curveball here for Porcello one of the best he's featured all day I thought in my opinion where he just bounces it and gets a swing and miss from smoke. Lexus Remember? making a pledge to strike out hunger for every strikeout by a Sox pitcher. Lexus donates fifty dollars to the Greater Boston Food Bank. Jerry, remember that curveball he threw earlier in the game that just got fouled off. Yeah, and we were mm -hmm. both saying, well, if he's going to feature that all day long, it could be an awfully long day. But he hasn't thrown that pitch all that often. I don't know if he feels like he hasn't really needed it. Just wants to break it out every now and then. But that has been a really nice pitch for him today. Russell Martin is 0 for two. He is grounded to the pitcher. Man struck out. And I know that Clay is not a sympathetic figure for a lot of Red Sox fans right now. Now that he's been dispatched to the bullpen, a lot of fans are going, yes, that's exactly what should have happened a while ago. But, you know, his dad was with him the last couple of starts. High fly right field. Bats backing up. That's going to sail into the corner. And another one. It just barely gets out. Russell Martin with his third home run of the season. A little bit like Donaldson's home run last night just escaping over that right field fence. That'll make it seven to four Red Sox. Yeah, always dangerous this lineup. I don't care what the numbers say for the season when you when you see him up close and personal they are dangerous. And Martin who has been really struggling gets a high fastball that time and not quite as high as the one that Donaldson hit last night but ends up almost in the same spot. So three run game brings up Travis who is 0 for 2 and he'll hammer that one right to the shortstop Bogarts will get him and retire the side. We go to the seventh it tightens up a little bit seven to four Boston.
Casino TC and Dennis Eckersley will preview David Price's start tomorrow against the Toronto Blue Jays. The finale of this series and the Red Sox will move on to Baltimore for four. Xander Bogarts will lead off here in the seventh inning. Red Sox ahead seven to four. Xander's been right in the thick of it with a solo home run in the fourth inning and a base hit and a run after a stolen base in the fifth. Facing the veteran Jesse Chavez who is 32 years old now. And Luke now throwing in their pen Aaron Luke the lefty. Got fisted there but he's going to bloop a base hit. Oh man. He'll take oh. the turn. Oh, a little bit of a drop there, and now Bogart's heading into second base as the throw comes into third. It should have just been a base hit, so it will be a single and an error on Pilar. Again, I mean, how does he hit this pitch? This pitch is almost like hitting the Boston on his uniform, and he's able to make contact. Now, there's Pilar dropping the ball. He has no idea where it is, and Bogart goes into second base, and you know, at least he's running hard down the first baseline, yep. stops, and then he sees the bottle, and he's got a chance to go to second. If you're just lottery, lottery down, down the first baseline, you can't go to second on a play, play like that. That's why you run hard until they make you stop. Excellent hustle. His ninth three-hit game of the season. Jeez. And he came in with more hits than anybody in the American League. Another one that almost gets him. It's going to go all the way to the backstop. And Bogart's into third base on the wild pitch. David was hit by a pitch last time up, but he swung and missed on strike three, so he struck out. This has been a crazy game for wild pitches, pitches that are being swung at that are almost hitting guys. You know what drives me crazy? And I don't get it. It was he made a sign like it was his fault the pitch and no kidding it was your fault like you know he tapped himself <laughs> who, who else is is it yeah I mean popped oh. up that is straight up finally got twisted around but underneath it and holding his third base Sandra Bogarts one man gone we see this all the time too when you know guys call time out at the plate and then they'll look at the pitcher and they'll tap themselves and go, my fault. Why are you telling the pitcher it was your fault? I mean, I don't understand that. What? Who cares? I'm you not know? ready. Yeah, I, it was my, my bad. Uh, okay, so don't drill me. I mean, I, I don't get it. Chavez throws one in the backstop and points to himself as his fault. Well, what's fault is it? Infield creeping in here for Toronto. And Hanley Ramirez... Last at bat, stroke the two run single. Oh. And here he stings another one in the left field. That'll bring in another run as Bogarts will touch home. So three RBIs in his last two swings for Hanley. Yeah, big day for Hanley right there as he he's able to take another line drive, hit it hard, and pick up the base hit to drive in a run. Three RBIs for Ameris on the afternoon. And out comes John Gibbons. I and mean, let's see if Chavez says it's his fault. Those socks are his fault. <laughs> Inside looking for that ball middle in he gets it and he cleans it out so eight to four this is one where you don't have to admit the blame I think we all know <laughs> <laughs> top of the seven Red Sox have opened up a four run lead we'll have more in just a moment.
is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Transparency, low fares, and nothing to hide. Back inside Rogers Center, Red Sox have collected 13 hits. They lead it eight to four. Steve Lyons, Jerry Remy, Dave O'Brien with in. This is Aaron Loop, the left-hander, just activated today from the minor leagues as they put Tulowitzki on the DL with a quad injury. And facing Jackie Bradley, who has doubled, hit into a double play, and grounded out one for three. So the Red Sox offense, which has been kind of down the last two days, has sprung to life. That one is fouled away. 2016 CBS Health Charity Classic features more than the nation's top golfers. Don't miss the Charity Classic Benefit Concert featuring Lady Antebellum at the Dunkin' Donuts Center in Providence on June 28th. Get your tickets at Ticketmaster.com slash Charity Classic Fenway. We keep kind of looking for keys to the ball game and Jerry talked about the double play earlier in this ball game that was huge to keep the Blue Jays off the scoreboard for more runs. You look at the last two at bats that Hanley's had. And down goes Jackie on the cut and a miss. So two men out Travis Shaw who homered his last time up will climb on in a two run shot to right on a beautiful swing his seventh. Red Sox have now recorded at least 10 hits in a game 31 times this season. But Dave you know we, we've talked about the offense all year long and, and basically it's been at home you know recently where they have scored a lot of runs and. You kind of highlighted uh, before we left on this trip how many road games the Red Sox have coming up, and they've got to establish themselves as the same type of ball club on the road. This is a good start for them in this game so far this afternoon. Well, I know you guys know what I like to say about 10 hits. You get 10 hits, you're supposed to win a ball game. One ball and two strikes on Travis. Travis came into the series in the top 10 in the American League in doubles and extra base hits. And he's added a home run to that today. One two pitch poke foul. Tonight at 10 on Nesson Sports Today we have a report from Pat's camp. Plus highlights from game six of the NBA's Western Conference Finals. That's tonight at 10 on Nesson Sports Today presented by People's United Bank. Toronto Raptors were eliminated by Cleveland here in the city last night in the NBA playoffs. Big sports night in this town. Check swing on a pitch down into the dirt to make it two and two. Yeah the city was alive last night. Big crowd here at the ballpark and a big, you know a big mess trying to get out of here and every establishment we drove by on the way back to the hotel had that basketball game on and Toronto was getting their lunch handed to him by Cleveland. <laughs> Many Molsons were yeah. being consumed. The 2 2. Cut on a missed, and down he goes strike three. The Red Sox do grab another run. They're back in front by four. 8 4 Boston.
with Nesson and the Greater Boston Food Bank. You can also enter for a chance to win a Nesson VIP ballpark experience. For more information, visit Nesson.com slash Lexus. And Rick Porcello's pitching line brought to you by Ace Ticket. He's got six, four earned, seven hits, just the one walk. He hasn't walked more than two men in any of his starts this season, and this is his tenth. And the Red Sox have Matt Barnes, who's been pitching really well, active in the bullpen. This, by the way, the 31st time the Red Sox have put up 10 or more hits this season, with 13 up there. It's a lot of noise. Hmm. Darwin Barney, the hitter. He's been trouble for Porcello today with a double and a triple. Pilar on deck and then Bautista, who is filling the role of the leadoff man these days for Toronto. The 1 1 drilled in there. Tyron Barney got his big career break with the Cubs. Came up as a shortstop and realized that Starlin Castro was going to be their starting shortstop. But he figured if I move over to second base, Castro doesn't catch the ball. I do. They can't have two guys in their infield that don't catch the ball. So he asked Ryan Sandberg to teach him how to play second base, who was in the organization at the time. And Ended up winning a gold glove over there. And now they're both out of Chicago. <laughs> yes. Two two to the third baseman and Shaw with an easy stab to get him. One man gone tonight at seven. You can catch the final game of the ACC baseball tournament. Watch as number three Virginia takes a number two Louisville. Catch all the action tonight at seven. Uh, Nesson. I do a lot of college basketball at Louisville, so that's that's the proper pronunciation. Found that out the hard way. What's that, Louisville? Not, not, not Louisville. No. Yeah, no. Louisville. Louisville. Yeah. Louisville. Oh, there you go. Louisville. There's no real syllables. It's just not really. Just sort of slur, slur you through, through it. And that, that's how they prefer it. Louisville. Louisville. Pilar with an RBI double. He's also struck out. You didn't drop a Louisville on them, did you? No, sir. No, sir. I don't think they would have let you come back had you done that. Never. I take it very seriously in Kentucky. Yes, they do. Anything related to college basketball. Bautista on deck. Gently hit. Bogart's charging, flipping, and oh, he overshot him. Ooh. Now I'm winding up in the seats. Yeah, I'm going to guess this is going on as an error on Bogarts. It's not an easy play in because Pilar runs well, so you know you have to rush it. But Bogarts is in good position right there, and the off balance throw is just going to sail on him to first base. So I think that will go as an error because that's certainly a play that he could have made. They're going to send him down to second base. Yeah, that ball went into the camera well or that extra row of seats, I think, didn't it? It did. It's out of play. So, man in scoring position on the error. I think that's the correct call, but Jerry, you're right. I mean, Pilar's speed down that line gets you to hurry things up a little more quickly than you want to. And that ball sailed on him. Yeah, the difference, the difference there is the speed makes you make that play on the run instead of getting your, your feet square and throwing the first base. And you know that before because you know the speed of the runner. Here's Bautista, one for three on the day with a base hit and a run. They got three in the third inning to take a three to nothing lead. Looked like they might run away a bit, but Porcello hung in there. And despite some questionable umpiring decisions, he kept his cool. Remember, Carl Willis came out to try to calm him down a little bit when Donaldson took a walk on what looked like a pitch right down the middle on ball four. And then later in that inning, when the umpiring continued to be a factor, and uh, John Farrell had to restrain his pitching coach.
Off the end of the battle, Squibber. Knocked down by Porcello. He flips, wow. and he got him anyway. Boy, did he hang in there. What a weird-looking play that was. Down to third is Pilar. How in the world did that happen? I mean, what, watch the spin on this ball off the end of the bat of Batista, and he trips, and he's not running. And, and, and they still get at first base. I mean, it's amazing. All kind of things going crazy on this play. The ball bounces back toward Batista. He has to get out of the way. He tries to cut back in to go to first base. He wasn't running to start with. Very strange play. A tremendously athletic play by, by Porcello, even yeah. though he didn't catch the ball. Goes <laughs> as a 1 3. Out he comes. 8 to 4 Red Sox, and more in a moment. So Porcello done for the day as he pitches into the seventh inning and gives way to Matt Barnes and Barnes has been really really good lately with runners in scoring position in particular in for a strike here on Donaldson who's popped up walked and singled opponents are over their last 22 against Barnes with runners in scoring position and they do have a man at third in Pilar Red Sox ahead eight to four. Here in the last half of the seventh in Toronto. Donaldson with a pair of home runs last night, five RBIs to power the Blue Jays to the victory, seven to five. And the one one. Two balls and one strike. Three pitches for Barnes. The fastball, it'll touch 98 at times. The curveball that we just saw in the changeup. Matt has allowed just one hit in his last five appearances. He's been locked in. Got a great hitter at the plate with two down. Made him dance. 97. That'll get you out of the way. Got him off the plate, but now he's put himself in a great hitter's count. Three and one, and Carnacion on deck. Donaldson now 13 homers. One of the reasons why I thought the Hanley Ramirez at bats were going to be so important in this ball game when he drove in two and then again drove in another one. I just don't think the scoring is over in this game. 
Three one and downstairs for ball four. So it's the second time Donaldson has received a free pass. He'll be on at first and third for Encarnacion. Tomorrow at 12, don't miss Red Sox first pitch presented by Joseph Abood, available at Men's Warehouse. DC and Dennis Eckersley have the Red Sox plays of the month. A play by Rick Porcello there on that little tapper by Bautista with all that spin on it. That might be on that list. <laughs> you never know. It's a bizarre play. It was a great play, and he didn't even catch the ball. He should have got an assist to himself. Two down, two on. Back to that number one at 98 to get strike one. Encarnacion has doubled. He's been hit by a pitch, and he has hit into a double play. Red Sox ahead eight to four in the seventh. Trying to snap a little two game losing skid. A little bit high at 99. Didn't miss by much. Another big home run threat for Toronto, and they have a lot of them. Here's the 1 1. Check the swing, and it is outside. They do appeal, and no oh, swing. That's a good pitch right there. I mean, I'm sorry. That's a fastball in the outside corner that should be called a strike. There's no question he did not swing, but look at the location of the pitch. Gorman has missed more than a couple today. Really on both sides. Here comes the 2 1. Chopper but foul. Marcelo did a great job with Encarnacion in his last at bat, pitching him away. Got him to roll over one into a double play ball to get out of it. And they're pretty much staying away from him right here in this at bat as well. I just think you're looking for deep trouble if you try to throw middle in against this guy. Now the crowd coming to life. Another big crowd at Rogers Center. Staying away. Barnes with a 2-2. Two, two. too far away and down. And now it's all filled up. Saunders next. He has nine home runs, but nothing today. So it's Pilar at third base, Donaldson at first base. And Carnacion can be a tough man to strike out. Here comes the 3 2. Just got a piece of it to hang in there. Keeping it down in the strike zone, but Encarnacion able to get a piece of it. See uh, the cluster of pitches down and away. The 3 2 is Donaldson runs. Hammered foul again. For a guy who hits as many home runs as he does, Encarnacion is tough to put away with the strikeout. He didn't even strike out 100 times last year. Yeah. Barnes trying to get him. The 3 2 once more. There goes Donaldson. Ground ball right to the feet of Shaw. And Matt Barnes does it again. He gets out of the inning, freezing that runner at third base. Been very good in those spots. Eight to four Red Sox.
Instagram do you follow Nesson? Well, you can stay up to date with your favorite sports network and teams by following us today. Just visit Instagram.com slash Nesson and follow today. A lot of good words for Rick Porcello today. Had to work hard in this game. He really did. And, uh, you know, we talked about the turning point, in my opinion, for Porcello was the double play ball. But uh, able to fight his way through this game and only give up the uh, four runs. I've never really liked it all that much when a pitcher will say, ah, it wasn't sharp, but I made the big pitches when I had to. And I always kind of think, I always like it when you make the big pitches before you have to, but he really did make quality pitches to a very dangerous lineup today. Now it ripped down the line, hooked into the corner by Young. That's going to be a fair ball as it bounces back to Saunders. He's heading into second base and standing up and safe. Decided not to slide on that play, but he's in there for two bases. His yeah. ninth double of the year. Yeah, he's been on base a couple of times. Get on an era, had a steal back in the sixth inning. Now he gets a breaking ball, and there was some question that goes out of our sight whether we can see it, you know, whether it's fair or foul down that left field line. And Young almost fell off the bag here at second base. He goes in standing up and watch him lean back and almost go off the bag. I was fortunate. Drew Storen now in the ball game as the Toronto pitcher. He's been with Washington for several years. So he's brand new to the American League. Appeared in 58 games for the Nationals last year. And so far it's not going all that well. A 7.80 ERA. In the American League, his Vasquez, he has singled and doubled. He's also struck out. Good day going for Christian. Lead off double for Young here in the eighth inning. Red Sox ahead eight to four. Ooh. He was indicating bunt. And it just goes to show, too, that, you know, what the Red Sox think about Toronto's offense. They do have a four run lead with six outs left to get, but they still. They don't think it's over. Yeah, they still want another run. They scored 891 runs last season. It's <laughs> a lot. Runner goes and a pitch inside and they forgot all about Young as he slides into third base. Now and credit Vasquez too because he, he recognized the fact that he was off at second base never made an attempt to swing at it. I mean what a jump. <laughs> Look at Vasquez put the bat on his shoulder. Go ahead take it. You got it. Now you got a man at third base. I got a better chance to drive you in. And the infield creeping in here. Here's the 2 0. Slicer foul. Neither one of the middle infielders paid any attention to Young. Storin one looked him and he took off. He had five steps before Storin threw the ball. That's almost like you get out there too far and you go, oh no. You scare yourself. Off. <laughs> yeah, I'm done. <laughs> You get such a great jump, you want to hesitate because you're afraid. Two and two. Mookie bets on deck. Now, I mean, you look what what Young has done lately. Chris Young has become very much a viable left field platoon player now. That's what they signed him for. He got so little opportunities earlier in the season. He wasn't getting off very well in the in the year. Now he's really playing well. Storens 2 2 and he gets him a swing and a miss for strike three one away with bets coming up tomorrow at 1230 don't miss Red Sox game day live presented by DCU TC and Dennis Eckersley preview David Price's start tomorrow here against Toronto against his former team DCU Digital Federal Credit Union what can DCU save you Price answering a lot of questions before the game about returning to Toronto to pitch here after helping them win last year. Always a strange feeling. You know, that come back and you pitch against your former ball club, no matter he wasn't here that long, but he did a lot of great things. That's pops at foul. He's one for four today. And he liked it here. He enjoyed pitching in Toronto. Wound up winning 18 games for the year. His numbers against Colorado, very workmanlike for Price. She picked up the win. Well, his numbers up here down the stretch were amazing. What did he go like nine and one when he put a Toronto jersey on? Yeah, he was outstanding. One and, and one on Mookie. I think they'll boo him. I really do think they will. 
they wanted him to come back. He made some noises about how much he loved it up here. Boston came in, made him clearly an offer that he thought was better. And I think they're upset that he didn't come back. We'll find out tomorrow. Line shot, but foul. Well, John Farrell hears it every time he comes out to make a pitching change. <laughs> yes, he does. Okay, that was for different reasons, though, right? I mean, they yeah. wanted Farrell out of here, and <laughs> they wanted Price back. I really wonder if Price will get booed. I really wonder about that. I don't know. You know, it's hard to tell how crowds are going to react. Do you thank him for what he did for you? I think there's going to be a mix. I think there are going to be some people that certainly thank him for what he did on this ball club last year. And he even said, wow, what a great home field advantage it was to play in front of these fans when we were going down the stretch. Yeah, he lavished praise on them. That might have been preempted. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> well, hopefully those will get quoted. Storing with a 1-2 runner at third base and one down. High and tight. David Price went nine and one and 11 starts after the trade from Detroit to Toronto with a 230 earned run average. Storin goes up and in on Mookie on that last pitch. You probably got to think down and away here. 2-2. Two -two. And swung on and missed. So Mookie continues to have a lot of trouble with Toronto. He strikes out for the second time today, and Pedroia will be next. Actually, they wanted to do what you said, Steve. They wanted to go down and away, but instead he misfires and gets it up and in. And they pick up the strikeout. Look where Martin set up. He wants it on that outside corner. Instead, it goes up and in, and Betts chases it. It's a good feeling when you miss location by two feet and still get the strikeout. Pedroia gunning for his third hit. He has doubled twice, and he's driven in two. And looks at strike one. He has gone two for four. And has a 22 game hitting streak against Toronto. Red Sox up eight to four here in the eighth inning. Xander Bogarts is on deck. Xander already has three hits again. Nine times this season he's done that. One one pitch. Massive cut by Pedroia. And himself a hanging breaking ball that time. A good pitch to, to Pedroia to launch but uh, did not make contact on it. Kind of a, a lazy curveball that stayed inside. And there's been a guy standing at third base for the last three hitters here. Could be another nice insurance run. One two from Storin. And popped him up. Smoked the first baseman. Saunters into foul territory. And that retires the side. Yeah, Young got very lonely over there at third base. Red Sox stranded. Boston ahead by four in the middle of the eighth.
an educational baseball site for kids. We have just what you're looking for. Visit NessonClubhouse.com. Special teaching videos there, games. Learn more about your son or daughter's favorite player on the Red Sox. It's fun, free, and easy to use. Visit NessonClubhouse.com today. Really nice day here north of the border as Saunders steps in and he has to move out of the way from a first pitch from Tommy Lane the 31 year old from St. Louis 263 ERA has been very reliable Red Sox ahead eight to four here in the last half of the eighth inning that one sounded like it hit him and it did he gets nipped by that pitch so a base runner quickly as Saunders gets hit. How many guys have we seen get hit today? Well, Carnacion got hit. Yep. Ortiz got hit, but it was a strike. Two men officially. <laughs> Justin Smoke next. He's gone 0 for 3 with a strikeout. Red Sox have doubled up Toronto and hits 14 to 7. Red Sox looking for their 30th victory of 2016. Toward the hole. Oh, what a play by Bogarts. He throws and he's safe. Pedroia came off the bag, according to the umpire. What a stop by Xander Bogarts. Yeah, I mean, it's just impossible to get much on it. The Red Sox may look at this at second base. The Red Sox have lost their challenge, but they can ask the umpire to do it, the crew chief. Now from that position there, Bogats has a tough time getting a lot on the ball. Pedroia doing his job by oh. stretching out like a first baseman, and they may have had him. I thought he came off, but I don't think his toe came off. Looks like he still has contact there with his toe to the bag, to the corner of the bag, and if he does, this could be an out. So they are going to take a look in New York. When the play was originally made and he kind of stretched off there it looked bad to the naked eye with like the heel came up but I don't think the toe ever did come off. You see the umpire making the call that he was pulled off the bag and that's going to be the question when they look at the replay. If Pedroia doing what he's supposed to do you know you don't have a chance at a double play you got to become a first baseman on a play like that and that's exactly what he did. A lost in the shuffle here. Was the tremendous play by Bogarts? Goodness. Now uh, dandy. Now we are down to three umpires. We have been since the early part of the game. Nick Lentz was right there to begin with. Tremendous play there by Xander. And with a naked eye from this angle, from where we are, we thought he held the bag. And they are going to rule him safe. So for Smoke, it'll be a base hit. Runners on at first and second. And Russell Martin will be the hitter. And here comes John Farrell. So Lane allowing two men to reach and gives up the baseball here. Toronto, much like the Red Sox, we're talking about their offense, are never out of it. And so Tazawa will be next. So we'll take the break as well. A threat here for Toronto in the eighth inning. They're down four, but they have two on and none out. We'll have more in a moment.
hit batsman and a base hit off of Lane. So now it's Tazawa coming on. 0 1, a 137 ERA and 21 appearances. And he'll be facing the veteran catcher Martin, who belted a home run his last time up. They have won. The Red Sox have hit a pair of home runs. Andrew Bogarts and Travis Shaw have both gone deep. And the Red Sox leading by four. Martin is one for three. And nobody out here in the bottom of the eighth inning for the Blue Jays. They had about 47,000 here last night. And another big crowd here today. So Tazawa ready to work and the first one to Martin. Swing and a miss. Rick Porcello went the first six and two thirds. Four runs seven hits he can pick up the victory but it's up to the bullpen. And the 0 1 to Martin. In there for a strike. He went to the breaking ball. We've seen how contagious hitting can be on this Red Sox lineup. You can't get this Blue Jay team feeling like their hitting is getting contagious. Two strikes here on Martin. Tazawa thinking strikeout. Instead filed away. You are both going to be amazed at this piece of official scoring on that last play. The ground ball the deep short requiring a spectacular stop by Xander Bogarts. The official scoring on that believe it or not guys is fielder's choice E6. What? They charge Xander Bogarts with an error for pulling him off the bag after making a diving stop. That's an impossible. It's absurd. It's ridiculous. That's got to be changed. Get changed. It, it has to. Oh, two, and the splitter is downstairs. Take another look, and you be the judge. I mean, everything in consideration. You know, you're playing at home too. That's another reason you should get a hit. But I mean, how could you give him an error? On how, where is the error? Where is the error on Bogarts in that play? <laughs> if that holds up, that'll be his second of the day. Oh, wow. But there's no way that can. That can't hold up. Hold up. That's a ridiculous call. I mean, an ugly call for the Blue Jays would be fielder's choice. No base hit, but no error. It's also got to be a hit. Yeah, if you're smoke, you really complain about that. Little looper toward right field. That's going to drop down for a base hit. Saunders rounding third. Here comes Betts. Betts firing to the plate and not going to get him. Runners will be safe at first and third. That'll make it eight to five. Martin with his second RBI of the day. Out just toward the end of the bat, as you can see right there, and taken right down that right field line on a blue. Saunders, who is at second base, he will score. This uh, this scares me. This inning it scares me a lot. Eight to five ball game, still nobody out. Tazawa, who's had a history of trouble against the Blue Jays. Mookie had a little hesitation out there too, like he didn't come up throwing right away. Almost like he grabbed the ball and said, okay, what's the situation here? Yeah, I think he double pumped. Double clutch there before he threw the ball home. I'm not sure if he was ready to make a play at the plate. Here's Devin Travis. He's got 0 for 3. Nobody out to on. Hard hit. Pass shot down the line. Smoke is in to score. Martin chugging into third. He slides in. That'll be a double for Travis. Uh, 
was talking about. Don't let these guys think that their hitting is getting contagious. With Russell Martin, a buck 80 hitter, dumping one in there. Now Travis, back to back hits. Yeah, he got a bad splitter right there. That thing stayed up in the zone, and he's able to hook it right down that third base line. That didn't do anything at all, just floated into home plate. And right by the dive of Travis Shaw, now the run comes in. It's a two run ball game, and still nobody out. Jimmy Paredes says a bat and a calling on him to pinch it here. Now suddenly the Red Sox in hang on mode. Second and third, nobody out. Eight to six. And the Red Sox are getting the closer ready, Craig Kimbrell. And this might be for a long effort today to try and secure this one. Well, Jerry, you mentioned it. Tazawa has had enormous problems against this Blue Jay team over his career. Yeah. And he's still out there. Yeah, and it, it gets in your head. I mean, you know, we talk about one-on-one -on -one matchups, but this is the one-on, you know, nine matchup because Tazawa knows these guys handle them very well. And your confidence when you take them out is, well, what's going to happen next? What's going to go wrong next? You see the ERA 683, although lately he's been pretty tough against them. Paredes hitting for Barney. With two men in scoring position, and he takes one down and in. He's four for 13 with a home run. Darwin Barney had two hits and stung the ball three times in this game, and he gets pinch hit for it. Martin at third, Travis at second. Two runs in. And the 1 0. He's taking, and it's downstairs. Not even close either with these pitches. It's almost like Tazal is aiming the ball, trying to make the perfect pitch, and, and it's just not coming out of his arm freely. Almost a short arm pitch right there. It seemed for a while he had knocked Toronto out of his head, but are they back in again? The 2-0 to the pinch hitter. Big cut and a miss. Good splitter right there. A 2-0 count to, you know, think, hit a thinking fastball, doesn't get it, and gets a pretty nasty split going down and away. You're going to try to pull the ball if you're a hitter in this situation. I mean, infield back. Worst thing that can happen, a run scores, you get the man at third base with less than two outs. That's a potential tying run. If you get a bonus, if you get the base in, you tie the game. But you got to try to pull it. Tazawa with a 2 1. Off the mitt. Here comes a run. And another run is in. Martin scores to make it 8 7. Uh, again, Tazawa way off his location that time. Again, it just looks to me like he's aiming that fastball and he's not close. Vasquez set, sets up outside. Look where the ball is. Comes all the way across the other side. Vasquez has to try to go across his body. It gets by him and a gift run. Now the Red Sox have to pull the infield in. With a runner at third base and nobody out. Three and one to count for Redis. Foul away at the plate. It has been an ugly inning for the Red Sox. A hit Bassman, an error charged, although it should not have been a wild pitch. Now Purdy's in a situation where he doesn't have to pull the ball, and he's looking at a shift situation where he's got three guys on that side of the infield. Yeah, I'm not crazy about the shift with a man at third base like this in infield. In. I, it just opens up a hole that you don't need to open up. Yeah. And a giant hole up the middle. Travis at third. Here's the 3 2. And he chased. That would have been ball four. When Jerry was talking about him having to pull the ball, is because there was guys on second and third, 
And your job is just to get the ball to the right side to make sure you get at least one of those runs home. Now he's already home. There's a guy on third. Now it opens you up to, to hit the way you want to hit. The ball's away from you. Go with it that way. They make the shift. They put Shaw now on the second base side. They put Bogots back at the shortstop position, but in. Red Sox hanging on here, 8 7, and the 3 2 pitch. Waved at and missed, and down he goes for strike three. Now that split has looked a heck of a lot better than his fastball. In this game, he's thrown a couple of very good ones. There's a split right there, moving down and away from Paredes. Infield all getting ready, all down low. It's <laughs> a great shot. This is a guy, too, Pilar, where you do not have to throw him a strike. He swings at everything. Here comes John Farrell once again. He has Kimbrell in the pen. One man out. And that'll do it for Tozawa. And it's time for Kimbrell. So he's got a long afternoon in front of him by a closer standard. Red Sox hanging on 8-7. And a closer is coming in. And we'll be back with more in Toronto in just a moment. Marcelo can still win it, but boy, has this thing changed in a hurry. Stroman only went five and a third, gave up 11 hits. And Kimbrell required to put forth quite an effort here today and looking for a five out save. And he inherits a runner at third base. That is the tying run. And only one man out. And Pilar the batter. I think with Pilar, all he really has to do is get ahead and expand the strike zone really wide. Well, as we thought they might, on the Bogart's diving stab in the hole, they have removed the error. They're sticking with a fielder's choice, no base hit, but no error. Man. Somebody came to their senses. Infield way in with one down. 97, and he blew it right by him for a strike. I think when it gets a little bit dicey for Kimbrels, when you're looking for a five out save from a guy who does throw a lot of pitches as a closer, gets a ton of strikeouts, but you have to throw a lot of pitches to get strikeouts. The 1 1. Foul tipped into the mid. That's exactly why he's in there right now, too, because they need a strikeout with that man at third base, and, and only the one out. They need a no contact at bat here by Pilar. And he doesn't have to throw a strike to him. <laughs> Look at this last 10 games. He has been dynamite. Batista on deck. And the 1 2. 
He got him. 98 to blow him away. Yeah, and I, I love what Vasquez does again. I mention this all the time, but he taps inside when they want to pitch outside. There's the tap. Put something in the mind of Pilar, and he had no chance, no chance at all on that fastball away. Filthy pitch right there. So now the infield backs up to normal depth, and here's Bautista. 0 for 4 against Kimbrell with two Ks. He is 1 for 4 today. Better get it started early. Ball one. Red Sox clinging to an 8 7 lead. Toronto has struck for three runs here in the eighth inning. Tying run 90 feet away. The 1 0 to Bautista. Donaldson on deck. Greg Kimbrell turned 28 years old today. In for a called strike right at the bottom of the zone. Not the kind of pitch Batista wants to swing at two balls and no strikes. It's a nasty fastball that's going to be down and away from him. Well, that is a great place to live if you're a pitcher. Unhittable. The 2 1. Base hit into right field. And that will tie up the ball game. Travis scores, and we're dead even at eight. Well, give credit to Batista. You know, he's out there facing a guy that's nasty that throws 99 miles an hour. What does he do? He shortens up his swing on a fastball away and just punches the ball to the opposite field. All fastballs and that at bat to Bautista. There'll be four of them. First two, they got to miss outside. One down, and the other one up and away. Then a strike, a nasty strike on the outside corner. Right back to the fastball again away. And Bautista takes it to the opposite field to tie this ball game. That brings up Donaldson. He's one for two, two walks today. In there for a strike. Bautista had darted off the bag. And then went back to first base, but he could have had that easily stolen had he yeah. kept on going. You can get a jump on Kimbrell. There's no question about that. Batista might have done what we were talking about early. Had too good a jump and scared himself. And the 0-1 to last year's MVP. And a breaking ball in there. I just think this game is amazing when you think about the pitch that Kimbrell threw to Batista. The pitch before was virtually unhittable. The next pitch caught a little bit more of the plate, might have been a little more elevated, and Batista bangs it into right for a base hit. Sox have coming up. Bogarts, Ortiz, and Ramirez in the ninth inning. And the 0-2 to Donaldson. He was their big hero last night with five RBIs and two homers. No win today for Porcello. That's a shame. And the one two. Roll to third base, but it is foul off the line. The bullpen hit has been so good. This season, giving up four in this inning. And last inning, when Young was standing on third base with nobody out and didn't score. Yeah, the inning started with a hit batsman. Saunders got nicked. And Toronto has gone on to score four times to tie it at eight. Here's the one two now to Donaldson. And just a bit outside, according to Gorman. Uh, 
Again, another pitch that looked like it might have had the outside corner, but not going the Red Sox direction. Bautista leading at first base with two away and a 2 2 from Kimbrell. High pop up. Bogart's there. Backpedaling. Says he has it. And that's the inning. Toronto blows up for four. We've got a brand new game here at Rogers Center as we go to the ninth, 8 8. At 8 8 as we go to the ninth inning. And a couple of changes now for the Blue Jays. Ryan Goins goes in at shortstop after they hit for Barney. And here's Gavin Floyd, who's now 33 years old. He was a longtime member of the White Sox last year with Cleveland. Also pitched for the Phillies in Atlanta. And now working out of the bullpen. A heavy part of the order here for the Red Sox Xander Bogarts to lead things off and he drills that one foul on the day a homer and two singles he has stolen a base and he has scored three times and he'd like a new bat. It'll be followed by David Ortiz and Hanley Ramirez run the ninth inning in an 8 8 game. Right now you think about. Chris Young a little bit mm -hmm. led off the eighth inning with a double and stole third base. He was there with nobody out. Didn't score. And the Red Sox could not get him in. 0 oh, and 2 on Xander. Yeah, Xander completely fooled on that curveball from Gavin Floyd. It's almost like, you know, it's a pitch that he didn't expect to ever see. And I don't think he ever did see it. <laughs> Xander now hitting 353. So this afternoon alone, he has lifted his batting average nine points. That tells you that it's still semi early in the season when you can lift that high. And he's awfully hot, the one two. Bounced up there, but it bounced a few feet in front of the plate. Back in the fourth inning, the home run really got things started offensively for the Red Sox. This afternoon, he takes an inside pitch and drives it, uh, bounces it off the top of the wall, in for a home run. His wrists are so quick. When you see him attempt his swing, you think that he's going to get jammed on it, and then he just throws his hands through. He likes this ballpark. His last 10 games here, he's hitting about 470. 
Fly toward right but foul. Robbie Ross Jr. now warming up in the Sox pen. Saw Robbie this morning at the coffee shop in a hotel and he was talking about how much fun he has catching home runs that go into the Red Sox bullpen oh, at Fenway. He's all over him. With his hat. Yes. Often with the hat. Loves to do that. He's caught several already this season. He's almost broken his neck about three times, too, trying to catch him. <laughs> He's aggressive. 3 2. Tried to hold up, but down he goes. A swing and a miss, says Gorman. One man away in the ninth inning. Yeah, it was pretty clear in that about that Bogos never really picked up the breaking ball from Floyd. Threw him three of them, uh, actually, three for strikes. And that last one going to be off the outside part, but Bogos cannot control the head of the bat. Goes around and the strikeout victim. But he he never got a good look at those curveballs at all. Here's David Ortiz now. David one for four today with a double. Good numbers against this right-hander. He misses inside ball one. David has hit more home runs at Rogers Center, 39 than any visiting player in the history of the building. He also has more RBIs here than anybody. Can you pretty much just throw that line out there every place we go in the East? Pretty close. Tampa Bay he is. New York he is. Coming off an outstanding homestand. It's on go 11 for 22 with six doubles and 11 RBIs. Kind of why he needed a night off. All that running. That heel was barking at him a little bit. So he did not play last night. Of course, you have artificial surface here as well in Toronto. There's a drive. Sock deep to right. Back it goes. It's gone. And the Red Sox have the lead back. Thanks to Big Poppy. His 40th career home run here at Rogers Center. And the Sox are in front, 9-8. Uh, he tried a different pitch at Ortiz. He tried a slider. And the slider did not fool Ortiz at all. Watch the location of this ball. I mean, oh. it's got hit me all over it as it comes to home plate. And Ortiz did. Oh, trying to think before this ball game. When the two superstars from each club had the day off before, what would they do today? Ortiz goes deep. Batista ties the game with a base hit last inning. Here's Hanley Ramirez, who's had a good day. Three RBIs. David Ortiz does it again. He puts the Red Sox in front. That quiets the sellout crowd of 48,154. High pop up. The shortstop will drift on back. Owens underneath it. And from the outfield makes the catch for the second out. It seems strange to say, but with so many other things going on in this ball game, you could almost forget about Ortiz right there in the middle of the lineup. And then you know he shows up and wakes everyone up. Do you really forget about him? You know, no, you can't. But he was sort of, you know, he had the double, but it almost seemed like a quiet afternoon. Then he strolls up there with some damage to do, and there he goes. It was his 60th all-time home run against Toronto. And may wind up a game winner. Jackie Bradley here, one for four. When you look at what Bogey did all day today and Hanley Ramirez with the balls that he was hitting in the runs he was driving in. Sock to the right side. Travis from the outfield. Turf will get him and retire the side. David Ortiz in his final season does it again. To see if the Red Sox bullpen can make this hold on for a victory.
David Ortiz with career home run number 516 has put the Red Sox in the lead as we go to the bottom of the ninth inning Encarnacion Saunders and smoke against Kimbrell. Last inning Toronto rallied to tie the game with four runs so they keep coming at you. But Donaldson and Bautista are out of the way as that one is pop foul back off into the crowd. Well Terry if they don't take the lead I don't think Kimball comes back out right doesn't Ross come into this game probably so that's why he was warming up in the bullpen. And if Kimball has to throw a lot of pitches in this inning he you know he may have to come out before it's over. Here's the 0 2 pitch. Tried the breaking ball and he flicked it foul. That was a little scary a breaking ball that stayed inside that time to Encarnacion but uh, he did not connect. Nine home runs for him. Might just go high fastball and then bury a slider in the dirt. The 0 2. Popped up. There's the high fastball back out of play. The Red Sox tomorrow is David Price on the hill. Against his former team again a one o'clock game against the knuckleballer R.A. Dickey. Price going in seven and one. Dickey at two and six. Red Sox have some success against Dickey at times they as do. well. Yep. And knocked him around a bit. Trying to secure this one. The middle game of the series and the 0-2 again. One and two on Encarnacion the DH. Two and two. See Vasquez pointing to his shoulder telling Kimbrell don't let that front shoulder fly out. That's why that ball was taken off on him. Pointed directly at home plate. When he misses usually his misses are hooked. Yanked fastballs, yanked sliders, way down and away. The 2 2 got a piece of it and barely. Say Vasquez uh, after that one pitch a couple of pitches ago. Looks out, front shoulder, keep it in, keep it tucked in. Just a little reminder. Encarnacion, the leadoff man here in the bottom of the night. Red Sox up 9 8. Ah, Papa. Drifting back Bogart, so is Shaw. Bogart says he has it. And a big first out here in the ninth inning. Yeah, Bogart was kind of waiting to see if uh, Chris Young would call him off that, but Bogart was. Very animated in his decision that he was uh, in position to make that catch, waving everybody off. Once Bogats knows he can make it, he just he's got those arms flying. Look, get away from me. Everybody get away. I've got this. Does the breaststroke there. To haul it in. Here's Saunders. He home run power. All for three, but yes, home run power. He's hit nine. Last time he was hit by a pitch in the eighth inning and that started their rally. They would score four times. As he scored. Bases empty and one down. And a 1 0. Check swing and it's inside. That's where Hanley's playing down that first base line. Not right on the line, but very close to it, trying to prevent anything to get between him and the first base line for two base hit. Outfield a little bit deeper than they normally would be. Trying to prevent the double. Kimbrell's 2 0 at 96, and according to the home plate umpire, corner strike is seeing a little bit of a dip in velocity here these last few fastballs. 
Twenty five pitches into his outing. He's gone from ninety eight to ninety six. We'll see if he can hump it back up there. Ninety seven. He's listening. That pitch ties his season high as far as his workload. His fastball almost rising in the strike zone. To the outside part of the plate. Tough pitch to make contact on. If Saunders strikes out, it'll be for the third time today. And down he goes. Not a fastball. Now that's the weapon he has that's uh, pretty nasty and that's that hard breaking ball you know you got to sit on the fastball because he throws so hard and then he can throw that breaking ball at 88 miles an hour down and in to the left hander generally that's a pretty good pitch to hit as long as it stays on the plate once it gets off the plate inside you lose it unless you're looking 98 and you have to. <laughs> So two down here in the bottom of the ninth inning the Red Sox and out away from a victory. It should be a very hard fought win and that's in for strike one on smoke. And they're still calling what he did back in the eighth inning a fielder's choice. That's ridiculous and, and it should be the base hit. No question. At least they removed the error on Bogarts which was laughable. Which choice did Bogarts have? <laughs> 0-1. Oh, that was nasty. And quickly 0-2. That's such a good weapon for him, that breaking ball. You have to think you're going to get a fastball when you see anything else. You're already committing because you have to cheat to hit 98, and you're in trouble if it's a breaking ball. Kimbrough looking to end it with a punch out, the 0-2. And a line shot base hit. So it's not done yet. Smoke is on and representing the tying run. No balls and two strikes and he comes back with another breaking ball his third in a row. So that's three that Smoke got to look at. And that one's got a lot of the plate and he's able to take it up the middle for the base hit. Now a pinch run of speed at first base in career. Ezekiel Carrera. And as you said, Jerry, Kimball's not a guy that holds runners on well, but will they take the chance at a, an attempted steal with Vasquez behind the plate? Yeah, that, that's the thing. You know, he makes up for it in two ways. He's slow to the plate, but he's got velocity and you got Vasquez back there. So that makes it a little bit more difficult. Here's Russell Martin. He's two for four with a home run. Two down. And pop foul back out of play. He's very aggressive. But it does take him a long time to, to get that delivery to home plate. And quite frankly, if I was going to put in a pinch hitter like Career, I'd have him running. <laughs> if he gets thrown out, we lose the game. It's my fault as the manager. <laughs> but I think it's very inviting to, to run him in this situation. I don't think Martin can catch up with a good Kimball fastball. Why do I always in spots like this think Dave Roberts? He's here from New England. Trying to keep him close over there. Nine runs on 15 hits for the Sox. Eight runs on 11 hits for Toronto. Two down at the bottom of the ninth. And the 0 1. That's a dandy in there for a strike. And he still likes that breaking pitch. I think Jerry made a great point. I mean, it, that breaking pitch is such a great weapon for him, but he threw it three times in a row. Sellout crowd of 48,000 up. And the 0 2 to Russell Martin. Runner goes. It's high. Here's the throw. It's off into right center field. Up and running Carrera. He's going to be safe at third as the throw comes in. That makes sense to me, you know, for the, the reasons I mentioned. And also, that's like a pitch out. That's a high fastball. It's just a bad throw by Vasquez. If they he call for a high fastball with no balls and two spikes, he got the high fastball, but he just lets it fly at second base. And 
Correa was going to be safe anyway, but now he moves up a back to third, so he can score on a pass ball a wild pitch. Yeah, that's why it's a big deal. If he's on second, you still got to get a hit to score him. Yep. Now a ball in the dirt ties this game if it gets by Vasquez. Well, what an ending on this one. Stolen base E2. The count one and two. Two out. Here it comes. <laughs> two and two. Back to the breaking ball again away, and Vasquez has to go across his body to make the catch on it. So if you're Martin or you're sitting on a fastball as Ross continues to warm. I can't sit on a, a breaking ball and miss a fastball. The 2-2. Two -two. Fouled off at home plate. He went back to number one, 96. And Martin is barely alive. Martin did a pretty good job of getting to that pitch. He fouled it straight back. Red Sox ahead 9-8 trying to squeeze out a victory in Toronto. Kimbrell with a 2-2. Line shot. Young won't get it. The run is in. It's all the way to the fence. Martin into second base. And it's 9-9. for the second inning in a row has given it up. Yeah, he shook off Vasquez on that pitch. Vasquez wanted to go to a breaking ball. He shakes him off. He wanted to throw the fastball, and Martin is all over in the gap for the double. That's why in those situations with two strikes, you, you can't be looking for a breaking ball when a guy throws 98 miles an hour. You've got to look for the fastball, and he got it. And a 9-9 game, and now they have the go-ahead and winning run at scoring position. Not much of a birthday for Kimbrell. Well, 96 is a pretty darn good fastball, but it's not 98, and that's all he had there. And Martin had seen a few of them. Got to give him credit. Excellent at bat for Russell Martin. His last three at bats a homer a single and a double driving in three runs from a guy hitting a buck 80. And now Devin Travis can win it. He doubled his last time up. Boy these last couple of innings. Have been something. Toronto rallying from four runs down and rallying again here in the ninth inning down to their last strike to tie it. And the 0 1 pitch. Went back to the breaking ball. Huh? And a runner heading into third base. And will stop right there. And uh, trickling away, and now just 90 feet away, the winning run for Toronto. Yeah, Vasquez had no idea where the ball was. Pretty heads up play by Martin. It's kind of risky. The ball's right next to Vasquez, but he yeah. couldn't find it. He couldn't find it. He's looking to his right, the ball's to his left, and once Martin saw that, he takes off the third base. It's a wild pitch. So now he cannot afford to bounce another one. Two strikes on Travis. Ground ball behind third. Shaw with a long throw. And it gets away from Hanley Ramirez. And that's how Toronto wins the game. They win it 10 to 9. And a brutal loss for the Red Sox here today. Hanley could not make the play at first base. First time we've seen him make a play, and there's going to be an error on that. I think it's probably on Ramirez. He probably should have caught that ball. They're going to call it a base hit. 
Martin certainly in the thick of it there as he scores. Watch it again. That looks like a ball Hanley maybe could have handled right there. I, in my opinion, let's take another look. Where's the throw? Does it bounce before it gets to his glove? I think.